les faux amis. So they look the same in English and in French, but then the meaning is different. Okay, so let's start now. And then the first one, it will be travailler. Travailler. Okay, remember when you get this E and then double L like that on the vowel. Y. Travailler. Okay, travailler. And it means to work. Okay. Sympathique. Remember the H. H is not pronounced. Sympathique. Okay, and it means friendly, nice. Then, rester. Rester. Regular verb from the first group, easy to conjugate. Rester, okay, and it means to stay, to remain. Then, la monnaie. Monnaie, okay, final, uh, not pronounced. La monnaie, okay, and it means small change. Le magasin. Le magasin. Okay, remember, you've got only one S between two vowels. Then you get the sound Z, all right? And then the ending here is I-N, so it's nasal, it goes in your nose, and it's un, magasin, okay? And it's shop, all right? Then, la librairie, okay? Remember, I here, librairie, final E, uh, not pronounced. La librairie, okay? And it's a bookshop. Then, la journée, la journée, final E, uh, not pronounced, and it's day. Grand, final D, not pronounced, okay, G-R, gr, 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 and then the nasal, en, grand, okay, and it means big or tall. Then, gentil, so remember this final L is not pronounced, Gentil, gentil, and it's nice or kind. Then, attendre, attendre, remember, final E, uh, you don't insist on it, it just gives you the possibility to pronounce the dr, dr, okay, so, attendre, attendre, all right, and it's to wait. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 5, Leçon N. And in this lesson, we'll discover vocabulary regarding le corps humain. Le corps humain. So let's start now. La tête. La tête. L'épaule. L'épaule. Okay, so in that case, I did put this F here, just to indicate you that it's feminine, okay, because you cannot see it here with the, the, the article L, okay, l'épaule. La poitrine, la poitrine. Le tronc, le tronc, okay, remember, final C is not pronounced here, le tronc, okay. L'estomac. L'estomac, okay, same thing here, final C, not pronounced, and then M means that this word, estomac, is masculine, okay, l'estomac. La hanche, la hanche, remember, H here is not pronounced, so you get the sound en, hanche, at the beginning. Le poignet. Le poignet. So this combination of ET at the end will basically open the sound. So you get E, E, poignet. Okay, remember, G, N, 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 poignet, le poignet. La cuisse. La cuisse. Double S and then two vowels before and after. It will give you a really strong S sound, okay? Cuisse, cuisse, la cuisse. Le genou, le genou. La jambe, la jambe. Okay, remember, A, M, when you combine these two, basically it's just like A, N, so it's nasal and it's en. Okay, so you get la jambe. 
la cheville. La cheville. Remember, double L like that after I, I, I. Cheville. Le pied. Le pied. Le dos. Le dos. Final S not pronounced. Okay. Le dos. Le cou. Le cou. Le bras. Le bras. Same thing here. Final S not pronounced. Le bras. Le coude. Le coude. So it's actually quite funny because the only difference between these two is this D, D at the end. Okay, so here in this one you've got le cou. Okay, and then the second one here is le coude. Okay, remember you don't insist on this final E. It only gives you the sound of D at the end. Le coude. Okay. Le nombril. Le nombril. Le doigt de pied. Le doigt de pied. La main. La main. So this combination, A, I, N, is quite interesting because it will give you the sound un. So it's really a nasal, it goes in your nose, okay? And it's un. Main. La main. Le doigt. Le doigt. Okay, so don't be frightened by this G because basically you don't pronounce it and then the final T you don't pronounce it. So the only thing you get to pronounce is this combination of three word or letters, sorry, here. D, O, I, okay. O, I, it's wa and then D, doigt. That's the only thing. Doigt, le doigt, okay. Le pouce, le pouce. L'ongle. L'ongle. Okay, I forgot to write it, but it's masculine. Okay. L'ongle. La peau. La peau. Okay. Remember this combination of three vowels. Well, it's quite rare in French, but then, well, well, you can see it's. But then, so the sound that you will have to pronounce when you've got the, these three vowels combined together, it's the sound O. Okay. So really simple. O. Okay. So you get. La peau. Okay? La peau. That's it. If you want more, then the address is here. YouTube.com slash Imagier. And then the website is here. If you want to see more material, then write me a beautiful letter or a mail. Okay, have a great day. Bye-bye. Le visage. The face. So we just saw the human body previously. And so we'll continue with le visage, if that's okay with you. Let's hope so. So let's start now. Les sourcils. Les sourcils. Okay, so it's quite strange because you get this L-S at the end, but then, well, you don't pronounce them. Les sourcils. L'œil. L'œil. Strange combination of vowels here, okay, and then you will get the sound e uh, and then y, oeil, all right, and it's masculine by the way, un oeil, l'oeil, okay, plural form, les yeux, okay, so that's the tricky thing when you compare the, the, the um, singular form and the plural form, okay, so l'oeil, singular, and then the plural, les yeux, Okay, you make this liaison between the two. Les yeux. Okay, final X not pronounced. Les yeux. Les cils. Les cils. Final S not pronounced. Les cils. La joue. La joue. Final E not pronounced here. La joue. La gorge. La gorge. Okay, remember when you've got this combination G and O, you get the sound G, G. Okay, so gore, gorge. And then G and E gives J. 
la gorge, la gorge. Le front, final T not pronounced, le front. Okay, remember this nasal O N O O O, le front. Le menton. Okay, same thing here. So you get two nasal, the first one here, en, and then the second one here, on, le menton. L'oreille. Remember, when you get this I, L, L, and then the vowel, it's I, I, l'oreille. All right, and it's feminine, by the way. Une oreille, l'oreille. Le nez. So remember when you get this combination, a Z here at the end of a word, it's E. Le nez. Le nez. La bouche. So remember, C, H combined together will give you this sh, sh sound. La bouche. Okay? La lèvre, remember, accent grave here, e, e, really open, la lèvre, la lèvre. La bouche, again, I don't know why, don't ask me, <laughs> I was tired when I made this one, so la bouche, one more time. La langue, remember when we've got this G and then U and then E, we get the sound G, G. Because when you combine this G and then E, remember it was the sound J. Okay, so you get to put this U between the two to get the sound G, G. So you get la langue, langue. Okay? La dent, final T not pronounced. La dent. Les cordes vocales. Les cordes vocales. So you can notice that, as usual in French, you've got this mark of the plural at the end, S, and then S here as well, but you don't pronounce them, okay? Les cordes vocales. Indicateur de temps. So if you want to introduce some uh, sentences or concepts at the past, present, or future tenses, then you will have to use them. So let's start now with the past, le passé, okay? And then the first one is hier. Hier means yesterday, okay? Hier. So remember, this H here is not pronounced, okay? So hier. Then, la semaine dernière, okay? So it's last week, okay? But then if you look carefully, we've got la semaine. So, semaine means week. Okay, and then dernière is coming after, okay, so la semaine dernière. And in that case, if you look carefully as well, you get dernière, so it's the feminine form, because la semaine, la, is a feminine word. Okay, so la semaine dernière, last week. And then we've got this autrefois, so it could be translated like in olden days or in olden times, okay, autrefois, so a u o Autrefois, final S not pronounced, okay? Autrefois. Then for the present now, we've got aujourd'hui, means today, okay? So don't be afraid by this word because it looks a bit scary if you look at it like that, but uh, take the time to, well, divide it. So the first one, A, U, O, jour, and then dui, okay? H is not pronounced, so you only get this dui thing. O, Jour d'hui. Aujourd'hui. And it means today. Okay? Then, cette semaine. Okay? So we've got here what we call an adjective démonstratif. Okay? This, set. Okay? And it's at, at the feminine form. Set. And then, semaine, week. This week. Cette semaine. All right? And then, maintenant. Okay? Normally, we tend not to pronounce this. Uh, okay, so we get this maintenant, maintenant, okay, now. For the future now, we've got demain, and it means tomorrow, 
demain, remember, when you combine this A, I, N, you get the sound un, demain, demain, ok, then la semaine prochaine, so it's next week, ok, and as we had for the past tense here, we had la semaine dernière, ok, so last week and dernière was coming after semaine, exactly the same concept, so you will have to put prochaine, so it's the feminine form here, after la semaine, ok, so next week, la semaine prochaine, mm -hmm. and then bientôt, ok, remember you put this accent circonflex but you don't write it, uh, you, sorry, you write it but you don't pronounce it, and then the final T is not pronounced, bientôt, ok, and then you could translate this bientôt as soon, Okay, so something that will happen in the future. All right, so let's see them one more time. First one, hier. Second one, la semaine dernière. Then, autrefois, aujourd'hui, cette semaine, maintenant, or then, maintenant, okay. Demain, la semaine prochaine, and then, bientôt l'expression de la quantité. So it's quite important, so I would like you to take a few minutes to watch carefully this video. And we'll start right now. L'expression de la quantité. So the first thing that we'll discover together, it's plusieurs. So plusieurs means several, okay? And so the way you will have to construct it is that after that you will have to add a a nom, a noun, okay, but then keep in mind that it should be at the plural form, okay, so several, and then followed by a noun at the plural form, so let's see a few examples now, j'ai invité plusieurs amis, j'ai invité plusieurs amis, okay, so remember, j'ai invité, so it's the past form uh, of invité to invite, okay, plusieurs, and then amis, friends, Okay. J'ai invité plusieurs amis. Second example. Il y a, il y a, there is, plusieurs enfants, kids, dans le jardin. In the garden. Il y a plusieurs enfants dans le jardin. Ok. And then, elle a fait plusieurs gâteaux. So, faire here at the passé composé form. Plusieurs, faire, sorry, it means to, to do, okay? Plusieurs gâteaux, cake, okay? So what you can see here is that ami here is with S, so it's the plural form, okay? Here, right after plusieurs, you've got enfant with S at the plural form, and then here you've got that gâteau with X, so it's the plural form, all right? So let's see now the second one. Uh, quelque, you don't pronounce the final S here, Quelque means few, okay? And same thing as we had previously, you will have to add a noun at the plural form, okay? So let's see the first example. J'ai rencontré, rencontré is to meet, so it's the past form. J'ai rencontré quelques collègues, colleague. J'ai rencontré quelques collègues, okay? Second example. Nous avons, so it's avoir, to have at the present form. Quelques petits problèmes, petits, small, problème, problem, avec lui, with him. Nous avons quelques petits problèmes avec lui. Ok, and then the last example. Elle a mangé quelques bonbons. Oh, oh, we get two dots here, I don't know why, but only one is enough. Elle a mangé quelques bonbons. Ok So, manger here is to eat, past form, and then bonbon, candies. So, same thing here. If you look carefully, you've got collègue with S, so plural form. Okay, here it's quite interesting because we've got this adjective petit, small, little, but then it's still at the plural form with S and problème at the plural form as well. Okay, and then bonbon here at the plural form with S as well. Okay, so now... Other possibility would be ne, and then aucun masculine form, or aucune feminine form. So no, or not any, okay? And after that, you will have to put a name, or a noun, sorry, at the singular form, 
Ok, so ne aucun, ne aucune, plus a noun at the singular form. Alright, so let's see the first example. Elle ne veut aucun conseil. Ok, so you can see here that it's elle ne veut, so she doesn't want, ok, uh, vouloir is to want, aucun, so not any, no, and then conseil, it's advice, ok, so elle ne veut aucun conseil. Other example, je n'ai eu aucun problème, ok, so here, et eu, so it's the verb to have at the passé composé form, ok, je n'ai eu aucun problème, problème, problem. So, I didn't have any problem. Il ne fait aucune erreur. Il ne fait, faire is to do, and it's the present form, aucune erreur. Error is mistake. Alright? So, if you look carefully here, you get ne and then aucun. Okay? So, it's, it's the masculine form because conseil is a masculine word. Here, it's quite interesting because, as usual in French, when we've got this ne, and then we've got a vowel after, so it can be quite tricky, so in most of the cases, this e uh, will disappear. Okay, so you take it away, but then still, aucun is coming here, alright, and then it's at the masculine form because problème is a masculine word. All right, and then the last example, well, you've got the first part, ne, okay, not modified because faire starts with F, so no problem. But then it, here you've got this aucune, okay, aucune, so because uh, erreur is a feminine word, so you will have to put this aucune. All right, so let's proceed now. Un peu, or peu. And it means a few or few, okay? So we'll be constructed with la préposition de, so you'll have to put this de after, and then you will have to put the noun without the article. Okay, so if you want to construct this a sentence with a few or few, so remember, un peu or then peu, then don't forget to put this de, and the noun without the article. Okay. Then if you want to use this autant, it means as much. Same construction, you will have to put this de and the name or the noun, sorry, without the article. All right? So as much we use this autant de and the noun without the article. All right? If you want to use moins, moins means less. Same thing here, you will have to use de after and the noun without the article. All right, so remember, less, in French it's moins, de, and the noun without the article. If you want to use plus, more, okay, in some cases you will have to pronounce it plus, okay, so you will see that a bit later, de, and then the noun without the article. All right, remember, more, plus, or then plus, de, and the noun without the article. If you want to use beaucoup, beaucoup means a lot of. It, look, it looks a bit strange, huh? beaucoup, like that. Remember, you don't pronounce the final P, okay? And then you get this combination of vowels, E, A, U, and you get the sound O. So technically it's beaucoup, okay? So it's not difficult to produce orally. Beaucoup, a lot of, okay? Same construction, you will have to put the after, and then the noun without the article, okay? A lot of, beaucoup, de and the noun without the article. If you want to use trop and trop means too many, okay, then you will have to put de and the noun without the article. Okay, remember too many, 
trop, don't pronounce the final P, trop, de, and the noun without the article. All right? And then assez. Assez means enough. Okay? Assez. Remember, two vowels here, A uh, and then E, uh, and then double S. So it's really strong, the S. Assez. Assez. Okay? Assez. So same construction, de, and the name, or the, sorry, the noun without the article. Okay? So enough, assez, de, and the noun without the article. Well, we'll see few colors, les couleurs, okay, so not all the colors because we're just starting, okay, so let's see what we've got. Blanc, blanche, okay, so I wanted to put for each color the masculine form here and then the feminine form here, okay, so here masculine, blanc, don't pronounce the final C, and then blanche. Okay, remember when you combine this CH, you get the sound sh, blanche. Okay, so blanc, blanche. Noir, noir. So it's quite funny because you will have to add this E at the end of noir for the feminine form, but then you don't pronounce it. Okay, so phonetically it is exactly the same. Noir, noir. Okay. Gris, don't pronounce the S, but then for the feminine form, grise. Remember? Grise. All right. So when you add this E, uh, basically it gives you the pronunciation or the possibility to pronounce the previous letter here. It's Z. Grise. All right. So gris, masculine form, feminine form, grise. Bleu, bleu. So same thing that we had for noir, you just add this E at the end, but then you don't pronounce it. Bleu, bleu. All right? So let's see them one more time. Blanc, blanche. Noir, noir. Gris, grise. Bleu, bleu. Okay? So, let's continue. Bleu foncé. Bleu foncé. Okay, so foncé, this adjective, well, basically it will be like dark. Okay, bleu foncé. Bleu clair. So, same thing here. This clair adjective is like light. Okay, bleu clair. Jaune. Okay, so it will be the same at the masculine and the feminine form. Jaune. Jaune. Rouge. So same thing here, same form for the masculine and the feminine. Rouge. Remember, G E J J J. Rouge. Vert. So masculine form, don't pronounce the final T. Vert. Feminine form, verte. So listen carefully. I don't say T, but it's T. Verte. Verte. Okay, so as usual, this final E only gives you the possibility to pronounce this T. -t. Verte. Okay. Marron. Same thing for the masculine and the feminine form. Marron. Les verbes impersonnels, so they are really useful and it's quite important to see them. And so we'll focus on three verbs. The first one, être, to be. Second one, faire, to do. And the last one, avoir, to have. Okay? And so the important thing with the, this uh, concept or this idea, les verbes impersonnels, is that, well, you will see in the examples, uh, they are not connected to a person and that's the main main concept so even if in French we use this il so the pronoun personnel il okay technically if you want to translate that directly in English it would be translated by it okay but then in French we use this il instead of 
it. Okay, so let's see now for être, for instance. So if you use this il est, uh, you will you you will <laughs> you will use this structure if you want to uh, talk about the time. Okay, for instance, we've got the the first example here. Il est tard. Tard is late. Okay, so il est tard. It is late. Il est tard. Okay, so even if we use this il, so it doesn't have the concept of he as normally we have. Okay, it's really this impersonal form. Okay, and then il est tôt. It is early. Okay, same thing. That's the reason why we 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 use this il form when we put the, the when we give the time. Okay, il est douze heures. Or then il est midi douze twelve heure, hours. Okay. And then this midi, it's noon. Okay, so il est douze heures, il est midi. All right. Second example is faire, and then it's really uh, useful to use this faire. So il fait. Uh, if you want to talk about the weather, pour parler du temps. Okay, pour parler du temps. So for instance, il fait chaud. Okay, chaud, warm, hot. Okay, so il fait chaud. So if you want to say it is hot, it is warm, then that's the structure you will have to use. Same thing if you want to say that it is cold, okay, froid is cold, il fait froid, okay, il fait chaud, il fait froid, all right? And then if you want to talk about the, the weather, okay, in that case it's beau, okay, it's a nice weather, il fait beau, okay, the opposite, mauvais, bad, il fait Mauvais. All right. Il fait chaud. Il fait froid. Il fait beau. So it's a beautiful weather. Il fait mauvais. It's a bad weather. Okay. And the last one, avoir. Avoir. So if you, well, we did introduce that a little uh, bit, bit earlier, but then this il y a structure is quite useful because you can, well, situer dans l'espace. Parler du temps, parler de l'heure. So if you want to uh, locate in, uh, into space, they say where, where things are, or then parler du temps, talk about the weather, or then parler de l'heure, talk about the time. So that's the structure you will have to use, this il y a, il y a. Okay, so let's see one example. Il y a un parc ici. Okay, so there is un parc, a park, ici, here. Il y a des nuages, clouds. Il y a des nuages. So, even if we've got this il y a, okay, remember that it can be for the singular, or then it can be for the plural as well. So, this a won't change. Il y a des nuages. Il y a du soleil, sun. Il y a du soleil. So, there is sun. Il y a de la neige. Snow, il y a de la neige. Okay? And then, if you want to talk about the, the time or a period, il y a 15 ans. So in that case, it's quite interesting because when we use this il y a 15 ans, technically it's 15 years ago. So this il y a will mean ago. Il y a 15 ans, j'ai voyagé en Chine. Okay, voyager is to travel. You've got the passé composé form here. En Chine, in China. Il y a 15 ans, j'ai voyagé en Chine. So let's see them one more time. Il y a un parc ici. Il y a des nuages. Il y a du soleil. Il y a de la neige. Il y a 15 ans, j'ai voyagé en Chine. Les démonstratifs. Les démonstratifs, so we'll see two type of demonstrative. The first one will be adjectif, demonstratif, okay? And then the second one will be pronom demonstratif. All right, so let's start. So we'll see for the adjective demonstratif, the masculine singular form, feminine singular form, masculine plural form, and then feminine plural form, okay? Masculin singulier, féminin singulier, Masculin pluriel and then féminin pluriel. So let's see how they are. So when we talk about les démonstratifs, technically it would be translated in English like this. 
okay? Uh, but then, of course, we've got in French the difference between the masculine and the feminine form, and then masculine plural and feminine plural, okay? So we'll see them now. The first one, so for the masculine, so this, this okay, adjective will be translated in French with ce, so it's the basic form, or set. Okay, so you will have to use this second option here, this set, when you will have a name or a noun after that will start whether with a vowel or then with H plus a vowel. Okay, remember this H letter in French is not really pronounced, okay, so it does it does indicate to you that well, when you get the, a word starting with the, the sound of a vowel, then you will have to use this set adjective, okay? And then feminine form is set, like that. So it's quite interesting because if you listen carefully, the masculine form here, set, and the feminine form here, set, you write them differently, but then you pronounce them the same way. All right. For the plural form, so masculine plural, it would be se, okay, and then feminine plural, good news, it's the same. So we've got one form here, se, and the option set, when you've got a noun starting with a vowel after, and then set, feminine form, and for the plural, you've got only one form, okay, and it's se, okay, remember, open Se, se, se. Okay? One example. Ce livre. So, this book. Okay? Livre is book. Uh, here, livre is masculine, so you will have to use the se. Okay? And then it doesn't start with the sound of a vowel, so it's the basic se. This book, ce livre. And now we've got Ordinateur. Ordinateur is a masculine word, means computer, okay? But then if you look carefully, it starts with O, okay, a vowel. So this ce ordinateur wouldn't be possible, so we've got to use the second option, as we saw previously, so it's set, written like that, okay? Set ordinateur, this computer. Third possibility here, we've got homme, man, okay? Uh, but then O is here, we've got this H letter. Remember, H is not pronounced, okay? So you've got the sound of O at the beginning of this word, okay? Set homme, so that's the reason why you will have to use the set. So it's masculine, but still set homme. So now, Feminine word, femme, woman, no problem about that because we've got only one option for this at the feminine form and it's set, written like that, set femme. Same thing here, if you've got a word like organisation, well it's the same in English, so it starts with a vowel but it doesn't change anything for the feminine uh, demonstrative here. Okay, set organization, set organization. And then plural, so whether it's masculine, so we've got friends here at the masculine form, so masculine plural, and then friends here at the feminine plural form, okay, but then the adjective demonstrative here, as you can see, will be the same. Ses amis, ses amis. All right. And it's quite funny in a way because if you only listen to these two things here, ses amis and then ses amis, you don't have really any phonetical um, information regarding the fact whether it's masculine or feminine. That's the way it is. Sorry about that. But, so let's continue now with uh, le demonstratif. So we'll see now uh, the pronouns, okay? So same thing, we'll see the masculin singulier, then féminin singulier, then masculin pluriel, and then féminin pluriel, okay? So pronouns, okay? So it does mean that you will have to use these pronouns instead 
of the name. Okay, so for the masculine form, we will have celui-ci and then celui-là. Okay, so we'll see the difference of use, but then celui-ci, celui-là. Uh, in English, it would be directly translated as this one. Okay, so you don't want to repeat uh, the name or uh, the thing that was previously stated, so you use this, this one, okay? In English it's easier, in French it's a bit more tricky because we will have this celui, okay? And then si and la, so you'll see that normally si is coming first and then la is coming next, okay? Celui-ci, celui-là, this one, all right? Same thing with the uh, the feminine form, celle-ci, celle-là, all right? And then for the masculine plural, ceci, okay, remember final X is not pronounced, so you get the sound ce, ceci, and then ce-là, all right? Feminine plural, celle-ci, okay, don't pronounce the final S, celle-ci, celle-là. All right, so let's see a few examples now. So if you ask a question, Quel est mon livre? Okay, what is my book or which one is my book? All right, and then the answer could be Votre livre, your book, c'est celui-ci, this one. Okay, votre livre, c'est celui-ci. Okay, and then normally when you talk or when you say that, you tend to indicate that with your finger as well. So you point the book. Votre livre, c'est celui-ci. Où est ma place? Where is my seat? Où est ma place? C'est celle-là. Okay, same thing, you tend to point it at the same time. Okay, c'est Cella. All right. So you've got to remember that we will have the difference between the masculine, the feminine. Okay. So singular and plural, and then we'll have the difference between this C. Okay. The first option, the nearest one. Okay. And then this la second option. So it's not the nearest one. Okay. La description avec c'est. So let's start. So if you want to use this c'est option to make a description, so c'est technically would be directly translated as, as it is or this is, okay? But then in French, you will have to add after that the adjective, but the adjective should be all the time at the masculine form. Okay, so remember, if you want to describe something, okay, you can use this c'est, and that's really, you know, a common way to, to, to describe things. Okay, it is, this is, but then remember, the adjective that will come after should be at the masculine form. Okay, so we'll see a few examples now, and the first one would be the option to, to uh, describe uh, un lieu, a place. Okay, so let's see now. C'est chaud, okay? It is hot. Warm, huh? Could be an option as well. C'est chaud, it's warm, okay? C'est froid, cold. It is cold. C'est beau, beau is beautiful, okay? And then c'est tranquille, quiet, okay? So what you can see here is that we've got adjectives like chaud, froid, beau and then tranquille, they are all at the masculine form, okay? Even if, I mean, the place uh, would be feminine and you want to describe it, remember that it should be all the time at the masculine form, okay? Let's see another example. So if you want to describe a situation, for instance, okay? It would be an option. So, ideal, ideal, c'est ideal, formidable, C'est formidable. C'est parfait. So it's perfect. And then c'est injuste. Injuste, the opposite is of uh, ju juste. Okay? And it's not fair, unfair. Okay? So c'est idéal. 
c'est formidable, c'est parfait, c'est injuste. Same thing here, okay, remember that all these adjectives are at the feminine form. Okay, let's continue now and see. So it could be uh, for an object as well. You could describe an object, an objet. So let's see now. C'est cher. Cher is expensive. C'est cher. C'est utile. Utile, useful. C'est beau. Beautiful. C'est adapté. Adapted. Okay. C'est cher. C'est utile. C'est beau. C'est adapté. Remember, all these adjectives are at the feminine oh sorry the masculine form i'm getting tired now all right so at the masculine form like i did say previously okay so let's see now another option so if you want to describe a dish okay you're eating and you want to describe a dish un plat okay so c'est très bon okay très is very and then bon is good okay c'est très bon C'est bon marché. Bon marché, it's actually quite interesting. I mean, this adjective here, so it's a composed adjective, and it means cheap. Okay, c'est bon marché. C'est salé. So remember, it's quite important because we've got the same adjective here without the accent. So if you don't put the accent, it means dirty, and then you pronounce it sale. But in that case here, okay, you put the accent and it's quite important because in that case it means salted, okay, salé, okay, c'est salé, c'est délicieux, c'est délicieux, okay, and then same thing here, if you look all these adjectives, they are at the masculine form, okay, so... The second option would be to put this structure at the negative form, which is not that difficult because technically you just keep, well, your structure, you just add as usual the first n and then pa before and after the verb, okay? Then, same thing here, you will put this adjective at the masculine form, okay? So we will basically just see one more time all the examples we had previously, but then at the negative form. So, if you want to describe a place, ce n'est pas chaud, ce n'est pas froid, ce n'est pas beau, ce n'est pas tranquille. Situation, ce n'est pas idéal, ce n'est pas formidable. Ce n'est pas parfait. Ce n'est pas injuste. An object. Ce n'est pas cher. Ce n'est pas utile. Ce n'est pas beau. Ce n'est pas adapté. And then a dish. Ce n'est pas très bon. Ce n'est pas bon marché. Ce n'est pas salé. Ce n'est pas délicieux. La salle de séjour. So let's start now. Le rideau. Le fauteuil. So remember, it's a bit tricky, this word. Fauteuil. Teuil. Fauteuil. Le fauteuil. Le coussin. La cheminée. La télévision. Ok, one more time. Le rideau. Le fauteuil. Le coussin. La cheminée. La télévision. Le lecteur DVD. Le lecteur de CD. La table basse. Le lustre. Le cendrier.
Ok, one more time. Le lecteur DVD, le lecteur de CD, la table basse, le lustre, le cendrier. Le sol, la table, le tapis, le canapé, la bibliothèque. One more time. Le sol, la table, le tapis. Remember final S not pronounced. Le tapis, le canapé. La bibliothèque. La cuisine. So in the previous lesson we were in the, la salle de séjour and now we're still in the house but it's la cuisine. So let's discover what we have. La cuisine. Le congélateur. Le réfrigérateur. Le frigo. L'évier, l'étagère, ok, so let's repeat them, la cuisine, le congélateur, le réfrigérateur, le frigo, l'évier, l'étagère. L'égouttoir, l'armoire murale, le four, la cuisinière, le lave-vaisselle. Ok, let's see them one more time. L'égouttoir, l'armoire murale, le four. La cuisinière, le lave-vaisselle, le chauffe-eau, la théière, la cafetière, la louche, l'entonnoir. Ok, let's see them one more time. Le chauffe-eau, la théière, la cafetière, la louche, l'entonnoir, le décapsuleur, l'ouvre-boîte, le tire-bouchon, le presse-citron. La passoire. All right, let's repeat them together. Le décapsuleur. L'ouvre-boîte. Le tire-bouchon. Le presse-citron. La passoire. La râpe. Le couteau, le casse-noix, le hachoir, le rouleau à pâtisserie. Ok, let's see them. La râpe, le couteau, le casse-noix, le hachoir, le rouleau. À pâtisserie. Les fruits et légumes, so fruits and vegetables. So I hope you're ready because we are starting right now. Les fruits. L'orange. So I did put this little F just to indicate you that it's feminine. Okay? L'orange. La pomme. La pêche, le melon, ok, so les fruits, 
l'orange, la pomme, la pêche, le melon, l'ananas, le pamplemousse, la pastèque, la banane, la figue, right. l'ananas, le pamplemousse, la pastèque, la banane, la figue, la prune, la mandarine, le citron, l'abricot, la cerise, la prune, la mandarine, le citron, l'abricot, So, by the way, I didn't put it, but it's masculine, just for your information. La cerise. La poire. Le raisin. Le marron. La date. La poire. Le raisin. Le marron. La date. Les baies, la fraise, la framboise, la groseille à macro, la groseille rouge. I just noticed that I've been making a little mistake here. Sorry about that. Les baies, la fraise, la framboise. La groseille à macro, la groseille rouge, la myrtille, la mûre des marais, la canneberge, le cassis, l'airelle rouge, la myrtille, la mûre des marais, la canneberge, le cassis, l'airelle rouge, la courgette, le haricot vert, le concombre, la salade, la carotte, la courgette, le haricot vert, le concombre, la salade, la carotte, l'asperge, le navet, le petit pois, l'ail, la lentille, l'asperge, le navet, le petit pois, L'ail, la lentille, le haricot, la fève, l'artichaut, l'oignon, le chou, le haricot, la fève, l'artichaut, so for your information, artichaut is masculine, L'oignon, same thing for oignon, it's masculine, it's masculine. Le chou. La tomate. Le chou-fleur. La pomme de terre. Le poivron. L'aubergine. La tomate. Le chou-fleur. La pomme de terre, le poivron, l'aubergine. For your information, aubergine is a feminine word. L'épinard, le fenouil, le champignon. L'épinard, 
So it's masculine. Le fenouil. Le champignon. Bonjour à tous, hi everyone and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 6, Leçon F. And in this lesson, we'll discover together les comparatifs. So if you want to compare in French, well, this is the lesson you should definitely watch. So in this structure, in this lesson, sorry, we'll discover three types of structures. The first one, avec un nom with a noun, second one avec un adjectif, with an adjective, and the last one avec un verbe, with a verb. Okay, so if you want to compare with these structures, then we'll start with the first one avec un nom. Okay, so if you want to compare with a noun, then remember that if you want to say more, then you will have to use this plus, de, and then here you will put your noun, after that followed by que, than, and the rest of the structure. Okay, let's see one example. J'ai plus de chance que vous. J'ai plus de chance que vous. Okay, chance is luck. Okay, j'ai plus de chance que vous. Vous is you. All right. Il a plus d'amis que moi. Il a plus d'amis que moi. Ami, friends. Nous, nous avons plus de livres que. Nous avons plus de livres que. Okay, so if I want to be really honest, and I will be, um, there is a strange thing in French language with this plus. Okay, because in some cases you will have to pronounce the final S, and in other cases you won't. So what I would advise you to do, because uh, we are at a uh, beginning stage, um, it would be to pronounce it each time, especially with this type of structure. So if you want to construct it followed by a noun, then in that case, my advice would be pronounce it. Okay. After that, if you've got the chance to go in uh, French-speaking countries or meet French-speaking persons, then you can listen to them and you will learn how to use it or not. Okay. But the first advice would be if you're using this kind of uh, structure with nouns, then pronounce it. Okay. So let's see now if you want to say as. Okay. So if you want to compare, so it would be autant de followed by the noun, then with this que, then, and you continue your structure, okay? J'ai autant de chance que vous. Okay, so I kept exactly the same uh, sentences, just to make it more clear. Okay, j'ai autant de chance que vous. Il a autant d'amis que moi. Il a autant d'amis que moi. Okay, so as usual in French, you know, you've got this de here, but then if the word, you know, coming right after is starting with a vowel or h, h plus a vowel, then you should definitely take this e uh away, okay? Il a autant d'amis que moi. Nous avons autant de livres que, okay? And then same thing here, as you can see here, you've got this que, okay, but then followed by a vowel, in that case, a uh, needs to go away, and then you get this que. All right. Then if you want to say less, it's moins in French, so no discussion about the S here, don't pronounce it, okay? Moins de, and then you put your noun, que, dan, and the rest of the structure. So let's see. J'ai moins de chance que vous. J'ai moins de chance que vous. Il a moins d'amis que moi. Il a moins d'amis que moi. Nous avons moins de livres que. Nous avons moins de livres que. All right, so that's it. Now let's see if you want to compare and use a structure with an adjective. Donc avec un adjectif, okay. First structure if you want to use this more okay so you will use this plus and in that case you don't pronounce the s 
okay, plus. Then you put your adjective, and after that you put this que, then, and the rest of the sentence. Okay, so let's see now. Elle est plus rapide que moi. Rapid is fast. Okay, elle est plus rapide que moi. Il est plus fort que son frère. Fort is strong. Il est plus fort que son frère. Nous sommes plus intéressés que vous. Okay, and in that case, well, you make this little link, little liaison between the two, so you hear a little bit this S. Okay, nous sommes plus intéressés que vous. All right, so let's see them one more time. Elle est plus rapide que moi. Il est plus fort que son frère. Nous sommes plus intéressés que vous. All right. And then, aussi, then you put your adjective, que, then, and the rest of the sentence. Okay, so the same examples. Elle est aussi rapide que moi. Il est aussi fort que son frère. Nous sommes aussi intéressés que vous. Ok, so I'll repeat them. Elle est aussi rapide que moi. Il est aussi fort que son frère. Nous sommes aussi intéressés que vous. All right. And then, moins, same thing here, remember, we don't pronounce the final S. Then you put the adjective, que, then, and the rest of the sentence. Okay. Elle est moins rapide que moi. Il est moins fort que son frère. Nous sommes moins intéressés que vous. Ok, one more time. Elle est moins rapide que moi. Il est moins fort que son frère. Nous sommes moins intéressés que vous. All right. And so the last structure... If you want to compare with a verb, then, in that case, remember, plus will be with the S. So pronounce it, plus que. Okay, okay. let's see now. Elle parle plus que toi. Elle parle plus que toi. Il mange plus que son frère. Il mange plus que son frère. Nous voyageons plus que vous. Nous voyageons plus que vous. Ok, so let's repeat them. Elle parle plus que toi. Il mange plus que son frère. Nous voyageons plus que vous. And then, autant que. All right. So it goes like, elle parle Autant que toi, il mange autant que son frère, nous voyageons autant que vous. All right, so let's repeat them one more time. Elle parle autant que toi, il mange autant que son frère, nous voyageons autant que vous. And the last one. Moins que, elle parle moins que toi, il mange moins que son frère, nous voyageons moins que vous. One more time. Elle parle moins que toi, il mange moins que son frère, nous voyageons moins que vous. And this is it. Okay, the next lesson is here on YouTube slash Imagier. And then the website is here, imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 6, Leçon G. And in this lesson, we'll see together. Let me click. <laughs> Le passé composé of the verb 
faire, faire is to do, and then we'll see together the passé composé form. So we, we, we did introduce the passé composé in the unit 5, okay, but I just want to check and uh, make it clear that everything is okay for you. So we'll start with faire. It will be quite fast, but still quite useful. Let's start. J'ai fait. Tu as fait. Il a fait. Elle a fait. Nous avons fait. Vous avez fait. Ils ont fait. Elles ont fait. All right. So to make it clear, one more time, remember that in most of the cases for the passé composé, you will have to use avoir at the present form, followed by this participe passé form. So if you're not sure how to construct that, check uh, unité 5 and then uh, you will see the, the, the lesson that explains everything. Okay, but then we'll repeat it one more time. J'ai fait. So remember, final T is not pronounced. J'ai fait. Tu as fait. Il a fait. Elle a fait. Nous avons fait. Little link between the two. Nous avons. Nous avons fait. Same thing here. Vous avez fait. And same thing here. Ils ont. Ils ont fait. Elles ont fait. All right? So that's it. It was the verb faire at the passé composé. Really important. If that's okay with you and if it's clear, then you can continue. And the website is youtube.com slash imagier. Or then more material, imagier.net. Have a great day. Au revoir. Well, basically, it's for important verbs. And this one, venir, to come, is quite important, especially because it's a bit tricky in a way. So we'll see why. Je suis venu. Tu es venu. Il est venu. Elle est venue. Nous sommes venus. Vous êtes venus. Ils sont venus, elles sont venues. Okay, so if you remember carefully when we introduced the passé composé uh, construction in the unit 5, I told you that most of the verbs uh, were constructed with avoir, but then we had the list of the verbs that requires this être verb. Venir is among them, okay, so that's the reason why you put être here at the present form. Okay, and then remember that if you get to put être, then have a look at the feminine form here. You will have to add this final e, okay, feminine singular. But then for the plural form, you will have to add this s here, here, okay. And then for the feminine plural, you will have to add this e, s. All right, but then the good news. There is a good news, yes. It's that uh, you you don't pronounce them. So basically, you've got the pronunciation venu, 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 and then the same thing, venu. You don't pronounce this final e. Uh. Venu. You don't pronounce the final s. Venu. You don't pronounce it, the final s either. Same thing here. Venu, and same thing here. Venu. You don't pronounce a uh, s. So phonetically, you only have one way to pronounce it but remember if you want to write correctly you will have to put a for the feminine s for the plural a s for the feminine plural okay let's repeat them one more time je suis venu tu es venu il est venu elle est venu nous sommes venus vous êtes venu ils sont venus Elles sont venues. So we'll see together uh, le passé composé form of pouvoir, pouvoir, can. And then uh, we'll see how it goes at the past form, this uh, passé composé form. Okay, so j'ai pu, tu as pu, il a pu, elle a pu, nous avons pu, vous avez pu, ils ont pu. Elles ont pu. Okay, so if you remember carefully, as I said, 
Uh, in unit 5, when I introduced this uh, passé composé form, most of the verbs are using avoir at the present form, so that's the case here. And then after that, you've got to put the participe passé. Same thing, it was introduced in unit 5, so check it if you want. And then for pouvoir, it's a bit tricky because pouvoir becomes pu, like that. Only two letters, okay? But then it doesn't change. If you look carefully, then it's always the same form. Okay, so let's see them together. J'ai pu. Tu as pu. Remember, you don't pronounce the S here. Il a pu. Elle a pu. Nous avons pu. Little link, little liaison between the two. Nous avons pu. Vous avez pu. Same thing here. Little liaison between the two. Ils ont pu. Same thing here. Elles ont pu. Le passé composé. And the verb is attendre. Attendre is to wait. Okay. And so we'll see the past form. So it's just some reviews that we are doing. Uh, but they are really important. So let's see how it goes now. J'ai attendu. Tu as Attendu. Il a attendu. Elle a attendu. Nous avons attendu. Vous avez attendu. Ils ont attendu. Elles ont attendu. Alright, so if you remember, when I introduced the passé composé form, I told you that most of the verbs are using this avoir verb at the present form and then the participe passé. Okay, in that case, Attendre becomes attendu at the participe passé, and then that's the form you will have to add at the end. And it doesn't change here, as you can see. J'ai attendu. Tu as attendu. Il a attendu. Elle a attendu. Nous avons attendu. So, two liaisons here. Nous avons attendu. Nous avons attendu. Vous avez attendu, same thing here, vous avez attendu, ok, vous avez attendu, then same thing here, ils ont attendu, ok, liaison here as well, ils ont attendu, ok, but make it fast, ils ont attendu, elles ont attendu. A passé composé of répondre, répondre is to answer and it's quite useful, so let's see how it goes for the passé composé form. J'ai répondu. Tu as répondu. Il a répondu. Elle a répondu. Nous avons répondu. Vous avez répondu. Ils ont répondu. Elles ont répondu. Alright, so it's not that difficult. Keep in mind that répondre, so the infinitive form, becomes répondu at the participe passé form. Okay, so the, this form that you will have to add each time here doesn't change. You know, you don't put the mask, you don't put, sorry, the feminine form or the plural form. You just keep it like that. Okay, so let's see them one more time. J'ai répondu. Tu as répondu. Il a répondu. Elle a répondu, nous avons répondu, vous avez répondu, ils ont répondu, elles ont répondu. Ok Le passé composé, but this time it will be for the verb partir. Partir is to leave. Ok And then you will see that it goes like that. Je suis parti. Tu es parti. Il est parti. Elle est partie. Nous sommes partis, vous êtes partis, ils sont partis, elles sont partis. Ok? Remember, partir belongs to this group of verbs that requires to use être instead of avoir for the passé composé form. And for that reason, you will have here, for example, when you've got the feminine form, you will have to put this final E uh at the end of your participe passé form. Okay? If that's plural, like it is here, you will have to add S. Okay? And it's, if it's feminine plural, you will have to add this E uh, S at the end of your participe passé form. But um, 
when it comes to uh, phonetics. So what you will pronounce, the good news is that you won't pronounce these a, uh, s or a, uh, s. Okay, so it will go like parti, parti, and then here same thing, parti, parti, and parti. Okay, so phonetically it's not that difficult, but then if you want to write correctly, remember to put a uh, for the feminine form, s for the plural form, a uh, s for the feminine plural form. Okay, so let's see that together. Je suis parti, tu es parti, il est parti, elle est parti, nous sommes partis. Vous êtes parti, ils sont partis, elles sont parties. Ok, that's it. YouTube.com slash imagier. Next lesson is waiting for you. And then the website is here. www.imagier.net Au revoir. Le passé composé of the verb savoir. Savoir is to know. It's quite used and quite useful. Okay? But then keep in mind that this lesson regarding passé composé is the last one. Okay? So if you're not sure how to make it, remember that in Unit 5 I did a big, big, big lesson regarding le passé composé. And then in Unit 6, few verbs were, uh, well, it was possible to see them. Okay? But then after that, we won't see le passé composé Again. All right, so let's start now. Le passé composé, savoir, goes like J'ai su. Tu as su. Il a su. Elle a su. Nous avons su. Vous avez su. Ils ont su. Elles ont su. All right, so for the last time, in most of the cases for the verbs, we will use avoir and then we'll use the participe passé form. In that case, savoir becomes su. Okay, so that's the reason why that's the form that you will see at the end of each forms here. Okay, and then avoir should be at the present form. All right, j'ai su, tu as su, il a su, elle a su, nous avons su. Vous avez su, ils ont su, elles ont su. Futur, simple. So basically it's the future tense, okay? When you want to express something that you will do. Let's see how we will make it in French. So we'll see the difference between the three, uh, sorry, the three groups of verbs that we've got in French. The first one, first group, is ending with er remember parler to talk to speak so the idea is that in that case for this group you don't change anything so you just keep the basic form the infinitive form all right and after that you will put at the end a e for je okay so this will be your ending so you just don't touch the verb i mean don't touch the infinitive form you just put at the end this ending okay second group of verbs finir to finish to end well the good news is that it will behave the same way as for the first group of verb you don't modify anything you just keep your infinitive form and you will put the ending re here as well so you get je parlerai and then you will get je finirai so it's not that difficult for these two first group, okay? The third group, it's a bit more tricky, of course, as usual, because we're talking about irregular verbs, okay? But still, I took this lire. Lire is to read, okay? And then you can see that it's ending with this e, uh, so the vowel e, uh, okay? As usual, what we'll do, we'll take this e uh, away. So we get now l e r, and after that, we just put the ending. Je lirai. All right? So it will apply for most of the verbs. Of course, because it's French language, it's not all the verbs. We've got exceptions, but we'll see the exceptions a bit later in this lesson. But still, that's the, that's the idea of uh, constructed it. If it's ending with this uh, vowel, take it away. All right? You get that. And after that, you just put the ending. All right? So let's see. 
the ending for je will be ai. All right, and you pronounce it a. Remember, open a. Okay, the ending for tu will be as. You don't pronounce the s, so you pronounce a. All right, the ending for il l will be a. Okay, phonetically exactly the same thing as for tu. Okay, a a. The ending for nu will be o n s as usual. Okay, remember you don't pronounce the final s, you get the on sound. Okay, nasal in your nose on on. All right. The ending for vous will be as usual a z, but then you pronounce it e. Okay, and then the ending for il l will be o n t. You don't pronounce the final t, so you get the nasal on. All right. So e, a, a, on, e, on. Okay. So let's see how it will go with parler, parler to speak, to talk. Okay. Je parlerai. Tu parleras. Il parlera. Elle parlera. Nous parlerons. Vous parlerez. Ils parleront. Elles parleront. All right. So as I said, just keep your basic form and just put your endings. Okay. E, A, A, on, E, on. That's it. Let's see now. Choisir, to choose. Second group of verbs. Je choisirai. Tu choisiras. Il choisira. Elle choisira. Nous choisirons. Vous choisirez. Ils choisiront. Elles choisiront. Same thing. Remember, just keep... The infinitive form, the basic form, and just just put your endings at the end. <laughs> e, a, a, on, e, on. Okay? Let's see now. Écrire, écrire is to write. Okay? So, third group, but then remember, as we saw with lire, lire, we took away this final e, uh, okay? And only with the first part, we just add after that the endings. So, j'écrirai, tu écriras, il écrira, elle écrira, nous écrirons, vous écrirez, ils écriront, elles écriront. All right, so it's not that difficult, okay, as I said, you take away the E, uh, and after that, E, A, A, ON, E, ON. All right, so, of course, we've got some exceptions, as I said, the first one, is être. Être will become sœur. So the important thing with the future simple is that the verb will change but the endings will be the same. Okay, so the endings we saw previously will be exactly the same. Okay, so the only thing that you've got to remember is that être will become sœur so that's the part that you will first, you will have to put, and then you will combine it with the ending, and it will become je serai. Okay, remember, ending for je was ai, je serai. Okay, avoir is becoming or. Okay, so tu auras. Aller will become ir. Il ira, elle ira. Faire will become fer, F-E-R. So you will get nous ferons. Savoir will become sort, S-A-U-R. Vous saurez. Voir will become vers. Il Verron, elle, verron. All right, so remember, être is becoming sœur, avoir becomes or, aller, ir, faire, fer, savoir, sort, voir, vers. 
okay but then after all these forms you will just put the normal endings that we saw previously so a e for je a s for a a o n s a z o n t other exceptions pouvoir will become pour je pourrais vouloir voudre tu voudras pleuvoir pleuvre il pleuvra devoir d'œuvre nous devrons venir viendre vous viendrez courir cours il elle courront okay so pouvoir is becoming pour and it means it means can vouloir voudre to want pleuvoir to rain pleuvre devoir to have to d'oeuvre venir to come viendre courir to run cour okay and then as we saw previously you only add after the endings all right so remember one more time je ending for je is ai tu ending for tu is as il elle a nous o n s vous e z il elle o n t okay so e a a on e on le pronom complément en so let's see now um we can use this uh, pronom complément en whether with a, an article partitif so this some concept or then it can be an article indéfini a in english it would be a un une or then it can be at the negative form so that's what we'll see and then we'll start first with l'article partitif okay so let's see now how we can make it so if you have a question like nicolas mange du pain so of course first possibility that you would have to you could have would be to answer oui nicolas mange du pain so manger is to eat du pain some bread okay in that case that's really the partitive form okay so you don't want to specify the quantity but it's some okay so of course the first option that you would have would be to answer like that oui nicolas mange du pain so you repeat everything normally that's not the way we will do because we tend to replace things with pronouns when it's possible okay so the first option would be to replace nicolas in that case you don't want to repeat nicolas so you can say oui il he uh, instead of nicolas because it's masculine mange du pain so that's the first step okay the second step you want to replace this du pain okay so this partitive thing and that's when this pronoun en is used all right so oui il en mange okay so in that case you use this il just to avoid repeating nicolas because it was previously stated and then you want to use this en the pronoun just to avoid repeating du pain because it was in the question okay oui il en mange so remember that this en pronoun should be before the verb okay so let's see now another example in the first example we had the masculine form and now i wrote same sentence but then here we've got de la salade okay salade is feminine word so in that case it's not du but then it's de la okay but still it's the partitive form some okay nicolas mange de la salade okay so as we saw first option would be oui nicolas mange de la salade so you repeat the 
whole sentence. Second option, you don't want to repeat Nicolas. Oui, il mange de la salade. Okay. And the last option, you don't want to repeat either Nicolas nor uh, de la salade. So you get oui, il en mange. Okay. Let's see now if you've got de l'eau. Nicolas boit de l'eau. Oui, Nicolas boit de l'eau. Second option, you don't want to repeat Nicolas. Oui, il boit de l'eau. Third option, will, sorry, oui, il en boit. Okay, same rule, en goes before the verb. Boire, here, it's the, the infinitive form is boire and it's to drink. Okay, de l'eau, some water. D'accord? Okay, let's continue now. Second structure, if you want to use le pronom en instead of an article indéfini. So let's see how it goes. In that case, you know, you've got a question. Nicolas mange un biscuit. So it's quite interesting because the difference between what we had previously with the, the, this partitif, some, uh, when you use this partitif form, you don't really... Um, give any information regarding the quantity. In that case, you use un, so that's clear, it's only one. Okay? Nicolas mange un biscuit. First answer, oui. Nicolas mange un biscuit. Same thing as previously, you just put everything again. Second possibility, you don't want to repeat Nicolas. Oui, il mange un biscuit. All right? Last option, you don't want to repeat Nicolas and you don't want to repeat biscuit, okay? The, the difference here between what we saw with the partitif and now is that you've got the, here you've got the quantity used, so you know exactly how many or how much, okay? So you get to put that at the end of your sentence. Oui, il, en, so you put your pronoun here before the verb and after that you put un. Il en mange un. All right. So let's see now if it's feminine. Une banane. Nicolas mange une banane. Answer. Oui, Nicolas mange une banane. Oui, il mange une banane. Oui, il en mange une. Okay, so... The information that you've got now is that you will have to put the masculine or the feminine form after. Okay, here you put une because banane is a feminine word. All right? So let's see now. Nicolas mange des céréales. So here we've got the plural form. Oui, Nicolas mange des céréales. Oui. Il mange des céréales. Oui, il en mange. All right. So basically, when you've got the plural form for des céréales here, you don't put anything after your verb. All right. So when you use this article indéfini, you will only need to put something after your verb if it's un or une. Or then in other cases, but we will come to that a bit later. Okay? So, let's see now la forme négative. Nicolas ne mange pas de céréales. Okay, so you've got the question, but here you've got the ne and then the pas, so you know that it's negative. Nicolas ne boit pas d'eau. So, let's see the, the answers. Non, il n'en mange pas. Non, il n'en boit pas. Okay, so the concept is still the same. You put your pronoun here and here before your verb. And then, as usual in French, normally you should have your ne coming here. But then, look, the pronoun is starting, is starting with a vowel, starting with a. Okay, so you should take this a away. All right. Il n'en mange pas. Il n'en boit pas. All right? And then, le pronom en, well, it can replace the preposition de plus a noun, 
and especially a noun for a thing. Okay, so let's see now. Est-ce que Frédéric est content de son nouvel ordinateur? Okay. Est-ce que Frédéric est content? Content is to be happy, satisfied. Okay. De son nouvel new ordinateur, computer. D'accord. Est-ce que Frédéric est content de son nouvel ordinateur? All right. So it's exactly the same concept. You could answer. I mean, you could make a, a long, long answer, uh, reusing every every. Uh, objects or everything in the, the, the question but then in that case we'll try to go a bit faster and so we don't want of course to repeat de son nouvel ordinateur here okay so the concept is that we will use this pronoun en instead oui il en est content all right so en same thing here before the verb And then after that, of course, you continue your sentence because satisfied should be in the answer. Okay, so oui, il en est content. Negative form, non, il n'en est pas content. So same thing, en stays before the verb. And then you've got the first part of the negation, ne, but then e is going away. All right, oui, il en est content, non, il n'en est pas content. Est-ce que Frédéric parle de son chef? Oui, il en parle. Non, il n'en parle pas. Ok? So, same thing, same concept. Just put it before the verb. Ok? When you get the negative form, then you should take this E uh, away from the first part of your negative form. Il n'en parle pas. Est-ce que Frédéric a besoin de notre aide? Okay. Avoir besoin, it's to need. Okay. Notre aide, our help. Est-ce que, est que Frédéric a besoin de notre aide? Same thing here. We don't want to repeat de notre aide. So, oui, il en a besoin. Non. Il n'en a pas besoin. All right. And now, let's see how it goes when you construct it with one verb, avec un verbe, with two verbs, with two verbs, avec deux verbes. And then if you construct it with one verb composed, like for the passé composé, for instance. So let's see now, avec un verbe, with one verb. So you've got a question. Laurent prend un biscuit. Oui, il en prend un. Non, il n'en prend pas. So remember, we saw that previously. Huh? If you've got un biscuit, in that case, you've got to state the amount here. Un, okay, so in that case, it's masculine. Un biscuit, so it's un. Oui, il en prend un. Okay, so you put un before the first verb. Non, il n'en prend pas. Laurent prend deux biscuits. Oui, il en prend deux. Okay, so in that case, you get to put the amount. Il en prend deux. So it would be the same if, we, if you would have trois biscuits, three. In that case, you would put oui, il en prend trois. But then keep in mind that if you put the negative uh, answer, non, il n'en prend pas. So you don't need to state uh, the amount. Okay, il n'en prend pas. Now, we'll see the same structures, but with two verbs. And so, the best way to construct with two verbs, if you want to make examples like that, is to construct that with the near future. Laurent va prendre un biscuit. He's going to take a biscuit. Laurent va prendre un biscuit. Oui, il va en prendre un. So, the interesting thing here is that if you look carefully, you've got first... Aller here, so the first verb is here, and then you've got the second verb here. So it's at the infinitive form because that's the rule in French. When you construct with two verbs, the second one will be at the infinitive. And keep in mind that your pronoun, en, here, 
should be before the second verb. Okay, so I'm not going to tell you that it should be between the two because you could have other things between the two. Okay, it should be before the second verb. Oui, il va en prendre un. Okay, and you get a good example here for the reason why I told you it should be before. Non, il ne va pas en prendre. All right, because here you've got your aller verb, va, but then you've got the negative form, ne va pas. But then your pronoun should be before the second one. Okay, il ne va pas en prendre. Let's see now. Laurent va prendre deux biscuits. Answer. Oui, il va en prendre deux. Non, il ne va pas en prendre. Okay? So let's see now when you've got a composed verb. So we just need to put the same sentence at the passé composé form. Laurent a pris un biscuit. Oui, il a on a pris un. Okay? So, the important thing now is to try to remember that when you've got this form, a pris, even if you've got two parts, well, technically you don't have two verbs, you've got one verb. Okay? So, your pronoun en should be before the verb, so it means before a here. Okay, one common mistake is to put this en between the two. Okay, because you tend to think that maybe you get two verbs, but no, 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 no. It's here, okay, il en a pris un. Negative form, il n'en a pas pris. All right, non, il n'en a pas pris. Laurent a pris deux biscuits. Oui, il en a pris deux. Non, il n'en a pas pris. Le pronom complément Y. So in the previous lesson we saw another pronoun, so it's uh, the pronoun uh, en, okay, and in that case, in this lesson, we'll see le pronom Y. Well, you pronounce it I, of course. So le pronom Y, we'll see that it can replace un lieu, a place, okay, or then it can replace la préposition a and then a noun of thing, and then we'll see how to construct it when you get a negative form, okay. So let's see now for a place, un lieu. So let's see a question. Isabelle va en Finlande. So va, remember, it's aller, okay, and then en Finlande, in Finland. Isabelle va en Finlande. So, of course, you will have many options to answer to this question. The first one would be maybe the more logical. Oui, Isabelle va en Finlande. So, you just take all the elements that you had in the question and then you answer with that. Of course, in many situations, we won't because French people like to use pronouns when it's possible. So, the first option that we would have is to uh, avoid repeating Isabelle, okay? So, elle va en Finlande, all right? And the other option we would have would be to avoid repeating this en Finlande, okay? So, it's a place, it's a country, okay? And in that case, it does mean that it would be possible to use this Y, so I, you pronounce it I, okay? So, oui, elle, I, va. So keep in mind that it's a pronoun and then it should be here just before your verb. Okay? Elle y va. Alright, so oui, Isabelle va en Finlande. Oui, elle va en Finlande. Oui, elle y va. Okay, so let's see another example now. So if you're using a name of a town because previously we had a country and now it's a town and so it's Paris, okay? Isabelle va à Paris? So it's a question. Of course, you can answer like we saw previously. Oui, Isabelle va à Paris. First option, repeat everything, no problem. Second option, you just want to avoid repeating Isabelle. Oui, elle va à Paris. And then, last option, you just want to avoid repeating Isabelle and then Paris. Oui, Elle y va. All right. 
And now it's a place, cinéma. Okay? Isabelle est au cinéma? Oui, Isabelle est au cinéma. Repeat everything. Second one, you just don't want to repeat Isabelle? Oui, elle est au cinéma. All right? Third one, just want to avoid repeating Isabelle and au cinéma? Oui, elle y est. All right? Oui, Isabelle est au cinéma? Oui, elle est au cinéma? Oui, elle y est. Second situation when we can use this pronoun I or Y, it's when you replace it. When you replace this preposition A and then a noun of thing. Let's see now. Est-ce qu'Isabelle pense, pense is to think, à son examen, exam, okay, to think about. Est-ce qu'Isabelle pense à son examen? First option, repeat everything. Oui, Isabelle pense à son examen. Second option, you just don't repeat Isabelle. Oui, elle pense à son examen. Third option, you don't repeat Isabelle. And same thing for à son examen. So, oui, elle y pense. All right? Same concept, remember, y should come before the verb. Est-ce qu'Isabelle joue au tennis. So in that case, remember, it's O, but then O is clearly the combination of the preposition A and then the article LE tennis, the, okay? So when you combine these two, you get this O tennis. So still, it does give you the information that it is the preposition which is modified. So still, it's possible to use this pronoun Oui, Isabelle joue au tennis. Repeat everything. Second one, oui, elle joue au tennis. And the last one, oui, elle y joue. All right? So you can see that it's, it's, it's quite short. It's quite short, but it's quite useful because you don't need to repeat all the things that were stated in the, in the question. Okay? So remember, as usual, the pronoun should come before the verb, all right? So now we'll see how to construct these sentences with the pronoun Y, but then when you're using this negative form, okay? Est-ce qu'ils a... sorry, est-ce qu'Isabelle joue au tennis? First option, oui, elle y joue. Second, non, elle n'y joue pas, all right? So, Negative form should be before the pronoun here, okay? And then, as usual, remember the n followed by a vowel. They don't really get along, so a uh, should go away. So you take it away and you get ni, joue, and after the verb, you put your pa form, okay? Isabelle est au cinéma? Oui, elle y est, non. Elle n'y est pas. Same thing, okay? Negation here before your pronoun, but then e uh is going away, and then pas after your verb. Okay, so let's see now how you construct it with one verb. Alexandre va au concert? Oui, il y va. Non, il n'y va pas. Okay, so no changes from what we saw previously, okay, so before your verb, and then here, when you get the negative form, your ne is coming before the pronoun, and then your pa is coming after your verb, okay? When well, you get two verbs now. Alexandre va aller au concert? So it looks a bit strange, sorry about that, is going to go at the concert. I know, <laughs> I know, but it's just just to show you how it works and I don't want to, to, to change the, the sentence, okay? So, oui, il va y aller. Okay, so you can see here now that this pronoun y should be before the second verb, okay? Il va y aller. Negative form, non. Il ne va pas, okay, so your negative form is before and after the first verb, and that's the key thing, okay, and then your pronoun is coming after, or before, sorry, your, your second verb, 
Okay, so your pronoun E should be always before your second verb. Okay, and now let's see how it will work if we've got a compo compose tense like uh, tense like um, aller here and it's at the passé composé form. So Alexandre est allé au concert. Okay, it's the past tense. Oui, il y est allé. Okay, so keep in mind that even if you've got two parts here, okay, it's only one verb. Uh, it's the verb aller at the passé composé. Okay, so it's composed. So we've got two elements, but still it's one verb. So it means that your pronoun Y should be before. Il y est allé. All right, and then. The tricky thing, normally, it's the negative form at the passé composé. Look, non, il. So you put first the negative part. So ne, obviously, this e uh, is going away because you've got a vowel, okay, as usual. Il ni est. And then you put, as we saw previously in uh, unit 5, or I don't remember, I guess it was unit 5 when I introduced the passé composé, you put this pas here between être and your participe passé form. Okay? So, non, il n'y est pas allé. Alright? Bonjour à tous. Hi everyone and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 7, leçon A. And in this lesson, we'll work together on the adverbs, les adverbes. And to be more precise, we'll see three cases. The first one will be with an adjective, an adverb. Second situation will be with un verb. And then the last one will be with une phrase. Okay, so let's see that right now. The first case we'll discover or we'll work on will be with an adjective or an adverb. Okay, so let's see. The idea would is normally that the adverb should be placed, adverb placé, devant, before, the adjective or the other adverb. Okay, so if you've got a structure with one adverb and one adjective, your adverb should be placed before the adjective. If you've got two adverbs, then this one should be before the second one. Okay, so let's see how it goes. Uh, first example, ce thé est trop chaud. Okay, ce thé, thé is tea, of course, and then here we've got the demonstrative. This T is too hot. Okay, so we've got the adjective show here, and then this trop should be before the adjective. Okay, so it's quite easy. Uh, another possibility here, you've got two adverbs. So this one, trop, too, and then rapidement, well, fast. Okay, and then parler is to talk. Il parle trop rapidement. Okay, so obviously this trop, uh, too fast, uh, should be before, rapidement. Okay, and then, last example, ce film est assez intéressant. Ce film est assez, assez, enough, intéressant, interesting. Okay, so assez comes before, intéressant. All right. So remember, if you've got one adverb, then you should put it before the adjective or the second adverb. All right. So let's see now how you will construct it if you have a verb. So the rule goes like that. L'adverb est placé, is placed. So the adverb is placed en général, in general. So that's quite important in French because, of course, we've got exceptions all the time. We will have exceptions in French, but en général, okay. Après, so after the verb, okay? Adverb placé en général après le verbe. So let's see how it goes now. Je lis, lire, lire is to read, okay? So it's the present form. Je lis, I read, rapidement, okay? So fast. Je lis rapidement. So you can see that this rapidement, fast, comes after your verb here, lire, okay? Second example now. Elle... Parle, parler is to talk, doucement, okay, quietly. Elle parle doucement, same thing here. Your adverb is coming after your verb, all right. And then the last one, il 
conduit, conduire is to drive, il conduit très bien, very well, sa nouvelle voiture, his new car. Il conduit très bien sa nouvelle voiture. So as you can see here as well, this très bien, very well, is coming after the verb conduire, to drive. All right. So remember, the adverb is placed in general after the verb. Okay? And then be careful, of course, if you construct it at the passé composé tense. So remember, we saw that previously. You should check the unit 5 if you want to know how to construct this passé composé. But then for the passé composé, we will have, of course, some exceptions. The exceptions are assez, enough, beaucoup, a lot, bien, well, déjà, already, mal, bad, mieux, better, trop, too, too much, too, okay, toujours, always, and then presque, almost, okay, so assez, beaucoup, bien, déjà, mal, mieux, trop, toujours, presque. So, try to remember them, and then in the next page, I will show you how they change. So if you take this trop, remember it was too much. So je parle trop. I talk too much. So if we've got the, the present form as we do here, basically it does respect the rule as we saw previously. So it comes after the verb. Okay, je parle trop. But then if you put the same sentence at the passé composé form, Okay, so remember, passé composé, you've got avoir or être, and then after that you get this participe passé form, all right? So you will have to put this adverb, trop, between the two here. J'ai trop parlé. All right? Let's see now another example. Il se repose. Se reposer to re is to rest. Okay, il se repose beaucoup, a lot. And then, if you put the same sentence at the passé composé form, il s'est beaucoup reposé. All right, il s'est beaucoup reposé. So remember, present here, present form, you've got this adverb, it's coming after the verb, but then here, it must be here, so between the two. Okay, another example. Je dors mal. So dormir, it's to sleep. Okay, mal, bad. Passé composé form, j'ai mal dormi. So same thing. Doesn't come after, but it's right here. Okay. Elle sourit toujours. Sourire, to smile, toujours, always. Present form, elle sourit toujours. And then, Passé composé form, elle a toujours souri. All right. And now let's see if you want to make a sentence. Because you will have to remember that in some cases, well, the place of the adverb can change. A variable. Okay. So let's see. You've, you've got an example here. Malheureusement, so malheureusement means unfortunately, malheureusement. Elle a perdu ses clés. Perdre, it's to lose. Okay. Ses clés, her keys. Okay. And it's the passé composé form. Malheureusement, elle a perdu ses clés. Okay. So that's one option. So you can start here, as you can see. You start with the adverb and then you continue your sentence. All right. But then it would be possible as well to change the order and to start like Elle a perdu ses clés. Malheureusement. Okay, so you can see that it's possible to start with the adverb, or then you can end with it as well. So it's possible to move 
the adverb in this case it doesn't need to be at the right beginning of the sentence okay we'll see another example récemment récemment means recently il a décidé okay décidé to decide de changer to change de travail travail is work okay récemment il a décidé de changer de travail okay and it will be the same here if you look carefully you can start with il a décidé de changer de travail so the same portion that we had here you can start with it and then you put récemment at the end okay so in some structures well keep in mind that it's possible whether to start with the adverb or that to end with the adverb if you want okay uh, well it's for, <laughs> for once it's quite easy in French all right okay so I hope it was clear so it was the l first lesson of unit uh, seven unité set. If you want more lessons, well, you can find them here, and then the website is waiting for you, imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye bye. In this lesson, we'll try to focus on what we call les adverbes de manière, and especially the way to construct them. Okay. So the rule goes like: if you've got, or if you want to construct uh, an adverb de manière, first you've got to know well the adjective at the masculine form, then you will make it or modify it and put it at the feminine form and after that you will add m e n t and when you add this m e n t at the end of your feminine form of the adjective then you will get the adverb okay so it sounds quite easy it is not that difficult okay but then we'll have a look so we'll take a first example easy one and this is parfait, okay? Parfait means perfect in English, okay? It's not that far. So we've got here this adjective, and it's at the masculine form. If we put the same adjective at the feminine form, well, the rule normally, we, we saw that previously, goes like you put this final e, uh, you add this final e uh, at the end of your adjective to get the feminine form. Of course, we've got some exceptions, but then that's the normal rule okay and so based on this form as we saw you just add m e n t and then you get your adverb parfaitement okay in english it would be perfectly okay so parfait then parfait parfaitement all right so we'll see a few examples and then the first one is franc okay so in some cases they will be a bit strange because the feminine will not follow the rule that we saw but then I mean I, I told you that in advance you know most of them uh, follow this rule but then of course we've got exceptions okay but then so franc franche so it's the feminine forms the adjective and then franchement you get the adverb here okay so for each adjective I will put the English translation here at the beginning all right do you don't pronounce the final X. Douce, feminine form. Doucement, adverb. Parfait. Parfaite. Parfaitement. Certain. Certaine. Certainement. Joyeux. Joyeuse. Joyeusement. All right, so let's repeat them one more time. Franc, franche, franchement, doux, douce, doucement, parfait, parfaite, parfaitement, certain, certaine, certainement, joyeux, joyeuse, joyeusement. Okay, let's continue the list. Heureux, heureuse, heureusement. Spécial, spécial. Spécialement. Clair, clair, clairement. Vif, vive, vivement. Sportif, sportive, sportivement. Ok, I can read them one more time. Heureux, heureuse, heureusement. Spécial, spécial, spécialement. Clair, clair, clairement. Vif, vive, vivement, sportif, sportive, 
sportivement. Okay? And then we can see some subgroups. Okay? So it does mean that here you will have the ending of your adjective at the masculine form, then here the ending of the adjective at the feminine form, and here you've got the ending of your adverb. So it takes back this ending here, e accent grave r e, and then you add this m e n t. Okay, so this subgroup follow the rule that if it ends with e r, then the feminine form will be e accent grave. It goes like that, r e. Okay, so let's see a few examples now. Entier, entière, entièrement. Premier, première. Premièrement. Dernier, dernière, dernièrement. Léger, légère, légèrement. Ok? One more time. Entier, entière, entièrement. Premier, première, premièrement. Dernier, dernière, dernièrement. Léger, légère, légèrement. Ok? And then... Uh, second, uh, second, sorry, subgroup. Uh, so if it ends with e t, then it will go like e accent grave t e, and then for the adverb e accent grave t e, and you add this m e n t here. Okay, let's see. Secret, secrète, secrètement. Okay, so I tend to insist a little bit on it just to make you hear the difference between the masculine secret, secrète. Okay, so you're pronouncing the T. Okay. Complet, complète, complètement. Discret, discrète, discrètement. Okay, so one more time. Secret, secrète, secrètement. Complet, complète, complètement. Discret, discrète, discrètement. Okay, so let's see another subgroup. So actually you've got two things here. The first one, so if your adjective is ending with e n t, then it will be transformed for the adverb, like e m m e n t. And if it ends with a n t, it will be transformed like a m m e n t. Okay, but then I did put them in the same group because phonetically, and that's the important thing, phonetically you will pronounce them the same way. So you will pronounce amant, and here it will be the same, you will pronounce amant. Okay, so let's see how it goes. Patient, and then patiemment. So as I told you, even if you write it E-M-M-E-N-T, phonetically it goes like amant, patiemment. All right. Récent, same rule, récemment, récemment. Récemment. Ok? Then, suffisant, suffisamment. And the last example, élégant, élégamment. Alright, so let's repeat them one more time. Patient, patiemment. Récent, récemment. Suffisant, suffisamment. Élégant, élégamment. Ok? And another subgroup, so if your adjective is ending with EL, then feminine form of the adjective will be E double L E, and then the adverb E double L E M E N T. Okay. Réel, réellement. Okay, so remember when you get this E here and then it's followed by two consonants and then they are the same consonant like here, uh, the sound of the E changes and it's open, it's a. So that's the reason why you've got this réel, okay? Réellement, all right? Then manuel, manuel, manuellement. Annuel, annuel, annuellement. Naturel, naturel, naturellement. Okay, one more time. Réel, réel, réellement. Manuel, manuel, manuellement. Annuel, annuel, annuellement. Naturel, naturel, 
naturellement. Uh, the topic will be dans la ville, so in the town, dans la ville. Okay, so let's start now. Une rue. Okay, remember final uh, not pronounced. Une rue. Une voie ferrée. Final uh, here not pronounced and then this one is not pronounced either. Une voie ferrée. Une autoroute. Une autoroute. Un boulevard. Final day not pronounced. Un boulevard. Un lampadaire. Final E uh, not pronounced. Un lampadaire. Une aire de stationnement. Une aire de stationnement. Un musée. Final E uh, not pronounced. Un musée. Un immeuble. So you can see I'm making this little liaison between the two. Un immeuble. Final E uh, not pronounced. Un immeuble. Un stade. Same thing here. Final E uh, is not pronounced. Un stade. Un gratte-ciel. Un gratte-ciel. Un restaurant. Final T not pronounced. Un restaurant. Un hôtel. So you can see that I'm making this little liaison, this little link between the two. Un hôtel. Un no, un no, un hôtel. All right. Un terre-plein. Un terre-plein. Remember this E-I-N nasal. So it goes in your nose and it's un plein, plein, un terre plein. Une gare. Okay, remember when you get this G and R together, the sound is gig, ga, ga. Une gare, final E uh, not pronounced. Une gare. Une tour. Okay, O, U, 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 une tour. Un palais des congrès. Final S here and here are not pronounced. Un palais des congrès. Un parc. Un parc. Un espace vert. First thing, you've got this little link between the two. Un espace vert. Final E uh, not pronounced and then final T not pronounced. Un espace vert. Un trottoir, un trottoir, une borne d'incendie, ok, final E uh, here not pronounced, final E uh, here not pronounced, une borne d'incendie, and then you get the nasal, un, en, un, sans, dit, une borne d'incendie, un égout, a okay, little link between the two. Un égout. Final T not pronounced. Un égout. Une conduite d'eau potable. Une conduite d'eau potable. Final E uh, here and here are not pronounced. And then when you combine these two, or oh, so, sorry, these three vowels E, uh, A, U, you get the sound O. Only O. Okay? Une conduite d'eau potable. Potable. Ok. Une conduite de gaz. Final E uh, not pronounced here. Une conduite de gaz. Un câble électrique. Final E uh, here and here are not pronounced. Un câble électrique. Un abribus. Un abribus. Un arrêt d'autobus. So you can hear this little link between the two. Un arrêt d'autobus. Un passage pour piéton. Un passage pour piéton. Final S here, not pronounced, and then final E, not pronounced. Un passage pour piéton. Des feux de circulation. So here, final X, not pronounced. Des feux de 
circulation. Une chaussée. Okay, here, final, uh, not pronounced. And then you get the double S between two vowels, so it's really strong. I mean, the S is s -s -s. Okay, so une chaussée. Un réverbère. Final, uh, not pronounced. Un ré. So here you get this accent aigu, et. And then here you get this accent grave, é. Okay, é, é. So it goes like réverbère. OK Un réverbère. Une maison individuelle. So remember, when you get this E uh, and then double consonant, and especially here, it's the same one. Uh, that's the, the idea. It will open the sound of E, uh, so you will pronounce it like E. Eh, OK Individuel. Uel. OK Une maison individuel une maison individuelle jumelée final e uh, here not pronounced une maison individuelle jumelée des appartements en copropriété remember final s and final t are not pronounced here des appartements little liaison here des appartements en copropriété Des maisons en rangée. Final E and final S are not pronounced. Des maisons en rangée. Une tour d'habitation. Remember, H, H doesn't exist in French. Well, in most of the cases. So, it does mean that you don't pronounce it. All right, so, d'habitation. Une tour d'habitation. Dans la Maison. So let's start now. Une entrée principale. Un vestibule. Un vestiaire. Un couloir. Un escalier. Une buanderie. Ok, so one more time. Une entrée principale. Un vestibule. Un vestiaire, un couloir, un escalier, une buanderie. Un salon, une cheminée, une salle à manger, une cuisine. Des WC, une salle de séjour, so one more time. un salon, une cheminée, une salle à manger, une cuisine, des WC, une salle de séjour, un rez-de-chaussée, un étage. Un palier. Une chambre principale. Une garde-robe. Une chambre. One more time. Un rez-de-chaussée. Un étage. Un palier. Une chambre principale. Une garde-robe. Une chambre. Une fenêtre. Une porte-fenêtre. Une salle de bain. Une douche. Une baignoire. Une porte pliante. So one more time. Une fenêtre, une porte-fenêtre, une salle de bain, une douche, une baignoire, une porte pliante, une table, 
une desserte, un fauteuil, un canapé, un banc, un tabouret, une table, une desserte, un fauteuil, un canapé, un banc, un tabouret, une chaise, un lit, une armoire, un coffre, une commode, un rideau. Ok une chaise, un lit, une armoire, un coffre, une commode, un rideau. We'll have the pleasure to discover together two verbs. So it's quite interesting because we've got first the verb savoir and then we've got the verb connaître. And if you want to translate that, I mean directly in English, well basically they mean the same thing and it would be translated with to know okay so two verbs for the same meaning what does it mean it means that you will have two different uses of these verbs the first one savoir well the rule is that you will use savoir plus a verb so after that if you want to add a verb then you will have to use savoir or then if you want to put as we say, structure verbal, so it's just somehow like a sentence, okay? So if you want to introduce a sentence after savoir, then uh, after to know, then that's savoir that you will have to use, okay? But connaître, so same meaning, as I said, it's to know, okay? You will use connaître only if you want to put a name or a noun after connaître. Okay, so that's the main difference of use between savoir and connaître. Okay, so connaître plus a noun avec un nom and then savoir with a verb or then structure or verbal structure or let's say a sentence if you want. Okay, so first of course we should remember how to conjugate savoir at the present form here. Okay, je sais. Tu sais, il sait, elle sait, nous savons, vous savez, ils savent, elles savent. Okay, so if you look carefully here, you write it S-A-I-S, -S, well the same way here. Here you write it S-A-I-T, okay, but then phonetically these three forms are the same. And it's sais, okay, je sais, tu sais. Il sait, elle sait. All right, so let's see now the passé composé form. J'ai su, tu as su, il a su, elle a su, nous avons su, vous avez su, ils ont su. Okay, so if you remember... When we introduced this uh, passé composé form, it was in unit 5, if my memory is correct. Uh, then you put first, in most of the cases, the verb avoir at the present form, and then you put this participe passé form. And the participe passé form for savoir is su, okay, so it doesn't change. That's the reason why you will put it right here after each form, okay. So j'ai su, tu as su, il a su, elle a su, nous avons su, little liaison here. Vous avez su, same thing here, ils ont su, little liaison between the two, elles ont su, okay? And now, let's see, connaître at the present form. Je connais, tu connais, il connaît, elle connaît, nous connaissons, vous connaissez, ils connaissent, elles connaissent. All right. Same thing as we had for uh, savoir, if you look carefully. Here, connaît, A-I-S, connaît, A-I-S, and then connaît, A-I-T. So don't forget this circumflex, even if you don't pronounce it well, you should write it. Um, well, you pronounce these three forms the same way. Okay? Connaît, connaît, 
and then connais. All right, let's see how it goes for the passé composé form. J'ai connu, tu as connu, il a connu, elle a connu, sorry, nous avons connu, vous avez connu, ils ont connu, elles ont connu. Okay, so same rule, first, avoir at the present form, then participe passé form of connaître, it's connu. All right, so it will go everywhere for each person here. Okay, j'ai connu, tu as connu, il a connu, elle a connu. Nous avons connu, vous avez connu, ils ont connu, elles ont connu. Okay? And now for the future form, uh, as it was introduce, introduced in the previous lesson, unit 6. Uh, so, savoir the future form, and it goes like, je saurai, tu sauras, il saura, elle saura, nous saurons, vous saurez, ils sauront, elles sauront. And then for... Connaître, at the future form. Je connaîtrai, tu connaîtras, il connaîtra, elle connaîtra, nous connaîtrons, vous connaîtrez, ils connaîtront, elles connaîtront. All right. So, let's see a few examples now. So the first one, remember, savoir, so you construct it with a verb or a sentence, okay, in that case I just put a verb, je sais chanter, okay, so remember, savoir, to know, chanter, to sing, je sais chanter, all right, so second verb here, chanter, well, the rule in French is that if you've got a structure like that with two verbs, the second verb should be all the time at the infinitive, okay, je sais chanter, like that. All right. If you put the same sentence at the passé composé, as we, we saw previously, the, the passé composé form of savoir, it goes like, j'ai su chanter. All right. And then the future form, je saurai chanter. Okay. So it's quite easy. Hein? Je sais chanter, j'ai su chanter, je saurai chanter. That's it. Let's see, connaître now. Je connais cette personne. Okay. So connaître... To know, okay? <laughs> and then, cette personne, personne is person, and it's uh, feminine, so if you want to put this, this, you should put it at the feminine, so it's this person, cette personne. Je connais cette personne. Passé composé, j'ai connu cette personne. And then the future form, je connaîtrai cette personne. All right? So it's not that difficult, okay? But, of course, there is one exception. And the exception is savoir plus a noun. Okay, so you will use this structure only if you want to introduce this concept that we call in French par cœur, so by heart. Let's see one example. Je sais ma leçon. So in that case, savoir to know, ma leçon, my lesson. Okay, so in that sentence, when you use je sais ma leçon, you really want to say that you know your lesson by heart. Okay, that's the reason why we use savoir in that case. Okay, same thing for the second example. Je sais mon texte, my text, or then my lines if you want. Je sais mon texte, okay, so it's the same. You want to introduce this idea that you know your text or your lines by heart. Okay, and that's the only exception when we will use savoir plus a noun. All right? Le conditionnel présent. So basically the conditionnel is, as in English, this conditional form, so would, could, Okay, but of course, as in English, we've got different tenses for that. And the first one that we will see, so the more classic tense that we us usually use, sorry, when we talk about the conditionnel, it's the present form. Okay, so let's start now. Le conditionnel présent. So in this lesson, we'll see first la formation, so the way to build it, to make it. And then, of course, l'emploi, so when you should use 
this conditional present form. Okay, so let's first start, if that's okay with you, with the formation, the way to make it. So you'll see that it's quite easy in a way, and normally that's the reason why we introduce it right after the future tense. So if you didn't see the video regarding the future tense, I definitely advise you to do it because uh, it will be more clear for you. So it's unit six. I don't remember the lesson, but check unit six, unit six, sorry, and then the future, and you'll find it. Okay? Because the way we construct this conditional present is the same way that we construct the future. Okay? The only difference will be the endings. All right? So let's take. The first example that we've got here, parler, belongs to the first group of verbs. Remember, we've got three in French. And the first group of verb is ending with a air, like here. Okay, so these verbs are regular. So that's a good news, and normally that's the reason why we start with them. Uh, so you don't have to change your verb. So parler is like that. You will keep it like that and based on this form after that you will add the endings okay and for je the ending will be a e s okay so you don't need to modify your infinitive form the basic form is like that it goes there and right after you just add the ending a e s and you get je parlerai all right so it's quite simple. Second group, so verbs ending with ER. Be careful, not all the verbs ending with ER, but a quite decent amount of them <laughs> belongs to the second group. But then still, it will be quite easy because it is exactly the same way. You don't modify your infinitive form. You just keep it like that, all right? And after that, you add your ending. Je finirai. So, A, I, S. Je finirai. All right, so it's quite easy. You keep your basic form, your infinitive form, and right after, you just put the ending. Okay? For the third group of verbs, so, of course, we will have some exceptions, so we'll see that a bit later in this lesson. But still, the main rule is if it's ending like lire, lire to read, okay, uh, with this e, uh, well, the idea is that you will take this e uh, away, as we quite usually do in French, okay, and after that, you will add your ending. Je lirai. All right, so the rule goes like if you've got final e, uh, then you take it away. You've got your form here, L-I-R, and then you add your ending, A-I-S, je lirai. Okay? So you've got three forms here, and they're actually the, well, conditional présent forms. Je parlerai, je finirai, je lirai. Okay? Parler is to talk or to speak, finir, to finish or to end, lire, to read. Okay? So, the endings now. So we saw that... Previously, that, well, the ending for je will be, whoops, sorry, the ending for je will be a, i, s. Okay? The ending for tu will be, well, the same, a, i, s. The ending for il, l will be a, i, t. Okay? The good news is that even if we write them differently, like you see here, we pronounce them the same way. And it goes like E, E, E. All right? So as usual in French, what you pronounce, well, it's not that difficult in a way, but then remember how to write them. A, I, S for je, A, I, S for tu, A, I, T for il, elle. So now let's see nous. And nous goes like E O N S, okay, and it should be pronounced ion. Remember, final S is not pronounced. Ion, okay. Then for vous, it goes like E E Z, and it goes like ye, okay. Remember when you get this E before, it goes like ye ye ye, okay. Ye, 
So that's the reason why we had this yon here and then ye. All right. And the last one. So even if it looks <laughs> scary because you've got three vowels here and then nt, okay? R E E N T. So as usual, that's the way you should write it. But then phonetically, the good news is that you pronounce it a. Eh. So the the same way that we had here, a, eh, a eh here, a, eh, and then a. Eh. Okay. So let's pronounce them, a, eh, a, eh, a, eh, yon, ye, a. Eh. So if you look carefully, you've got only three phonetical pronunciation. The first one is here. And here it's the same. So it's a. Eh. After that we get this yon, and after that after that we get this ye. All right. So let's see now for parler. Parler is to speak or to talk. Okay. So je parlerai. Tu parlerais. Il parlerait. Elle parlerait. Nous parlerions. Vous parleriez. Il parlerait. Elle parlerait. Second example, choisir from the second group of verbs. Choisir is to choose. Je choisirai. Tu choisirais. Il choisirait. Elle choisirait. Nous choisirions. Vous choisiriez. Il choisirait. Elle choisirait. Okay, not that difficult. And the last example, so for the third group, it's Écrire, écrire is to write, okay, so same rule, if you remember, the example was with lire, to read, but then it's exactly the same rule, so if you look carefully, it's ending with the, this E, uh, okay, so you take it away, and after that you put the ending. J'écrirai, tu écrirais, il écrirait, elle écrirait, nous écririons, vous écririez, ils écriraient, elles écriraient. All right, so it's not that difficult anyway. But of course, we've got some exceptions, as I said in the beginning. So the, the, the idea for these exceptions is that the, the, the word, or sorry, the verb will change. So endings will be the same, so that's one good news. So all the endings that we saw previously, well, they will be the same. But then you get to remember the way the verb will change change. So if you saw, that's the reason why I, I spoke about the future uh, lesson, if you saw the future lesson and you remember the way these verbs are changing for the future, the good news is that they will be changing the same way. So être will become sœur. All right? And then after that, you will have to put the endings. Je serai. All right, so you will keep this sir all the time for your conjugation. And after that, you will add all the endings that we saw. Okay? Avoir will become or. Same thing here. After that, you will add all the endings. So, tu aurais. Aller will become ir. And you'll get il irait, elle irait. Faire will become fur. Nous ferions. Savoir will become sort. Vous sauriez. Voir will become vert. Il verrait, elle verrait. Okay, so let's see them one more time. So, être, to be, je serai. Avoir, to have, tu aurais. Aller, to go, il irait, elle irait. Faire, to do, nous ferions. Savoir, to know, vous sauriez. Voir, to see, il verrait, elle verrait. All right, so one more list of exceptions. Pouvoir will become pour. Je pourrais. Vouloir will become voudre. Tu voudrais. Pleuvoir will become pleuvre. 
il pleuvrait. Devoir will become d'œuvre. Nous devrions. Venir will become viendre. Vous viendriez. Courir will become cour. Il courrait, elle courrait. All right, so let's see them one more time. Pouvoir can. Je pourrais. Vouloir to want. Tu voudrais. Pleuvoir to rain. Il pleuvrait. Devoir to have to. Nous devrions. Venir to come. Vous viendriez. Courir to run. Il courrait, elle courrait. All right. So it was the first thing regarding the conditional present, and then, as I said, regarding the, the the fact that it's quite close to the future. So the important thing is to remember that the endings for the future are a i, a s, a, o n s, e z, o n t. Okay, but then for the conditional present, if you remember them, it was a i s. A I S A I T I O N S I E Z A I E N T. So to be totally honest, if you think about that, because basically we construct these two tenses the same way. Okay, so the endings here and here will be the only way to make the difference between the future and the conditional. So it's quite important to really remember them. Uh, by heart. Okay, so remember, future, a i a s a o n s e z o n t, but then conditional present, a i s a i s a i t, i o n s i e z a i e n t. Okay, and now let's see when we should use this conditional present because that's the most important thing. The first situation would be to express a desire or a wish, exprimer un désir ou un souhait. Okay? J'aimerais être en vacances. Aimer, to like or to love. Okay? And here you get the conditional form. Être, to be, en vacances, on vacation, holidays. J'aimerais être en vacances. Second, use will be if you want to donner un conseil, to give an advice. Vous devriez apprendre le français. Okay, devoir to have to, but then in that case, when you say vous devriez, you should. Uh, that would be the more correct translation. Vous devriez apprendre, apprendre is to learn, le français, French. And then if you want to ask something politely, that's the tense you should definitely use, and especially if you go in a coffee restaurant or if you go in a shop and you you want to ask some for something, then use this conditional form. I mean, trust me, it's quite important. Okay, je voudrais un café s'il vous plaît. Okay, je voudrais un café s'il vous plaît. Okay, so let's read them one more time. J'aimerais être en vacances. Vous devriez apprendre le français. Je voudrais un café, s'il vous plaît. Another use of this conditionnel présent is, is if you want to construct a sentence, like in English, for instance, with this if. Okay? So, if in French is si. And then the rule is quite strict in French. If you start with this if, si, then it should be followed by the imparfait form. We didn't see this form yet. It will come in the next lesson or in the next unit, sorry. So, no stress about that. It's just an example, but it's just, just for you to know that if you want to construct this if structure, then it should be followed by imparfait. Then comes le conditionnel. Ok, so let's take one example. Si j'avais le temps, 
je ferai du sport. Ok so, Si j'avais le temps, so if I had, it's the same in English, hein? you, 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 put, uh, you put this, I had. Si j'avais le temps, so time, je ferais, remember it was faire, to do, but then at the conditional form, du sport. Ok Another example. Si j'étais riche, so riche, rich, était, it's to be, remember, je voyagerais, voyager is to travel, autour du monde, around the world. Oops. <laughs> And then the last one. Si elle était là, so être, to be, là, here, nous Irions, so remember it was to go, aller, and it becomes ir, irions, nous promener. Ok, so se promener, to have a walk. Question avec qui et que. So it's quite important, so please take the time to listen to me. <laughs> so let's start now. Les questions avec qui et que. So we'll first start with qui, and then after that we'll see que. Alright, so the first thing, qui And it's starting right now. Qui est-ce qui parle? So it's a question, okay? Qui est-ce qui parle? Second example would be, qui est-ce que tu regardes? Okay, so the first one, qui est-ce qui parle? And then, qui est-ce que tu regardes? So in both cases, uh, well, these questions are mostly for uh, oral use because uh, when we add this s qui est-ce que, normally it's when you talk, okay? If you write, you don't really need to put them. Uh, we've got some more formal way to write questions. We saw that previously, okay? But still, it's possible orally to use these structures. So the question is, why do we use qui here and qui here, and then qui here and que here, okay? Because it can, it can look a bit messy at the beginning, especially if you don't really know how to use or to structure that. So the first thing, that we've got to remember. Yes, it's here. So the first part here, this key, well, we will use this key here just because we want to have the information and it concerns a person. Who, okay? Key means who when we start it, when we start the question with it, okay? Qui est qui parle? Qui est-ce que tu regardes? And then we've got the second part here, as we saw, and it's quite interesting because we've got two options here, the first one and the second one. So the first one, you will use qui just because you will ask the question regarding the subject of the verb. You've got the verb here, parler, okay? And the information that you want to have concerns the subject of this verb. And then here, we will use que just because we want to have the information concerning the object of the verb. So you've got regarder here, but then if you look carefully, you already have the subject. It's tu regardes, okay? So, qui est-ce qui parle? So if you want to translate it directly, you could translate it like, who is talking? Okay? Qui est-ce qui parle? All right, so here, you want to have the information regarding the person, And then, here, you want to have the information regarding the subject of the verb, parler. Okay? And here, qui est-ce que tu regardes? So, who are you watching? So, first thing here, because you want to have this information, the information regarding a person, qui est-ce que? And here, it will be the object of the verb. So, you are watching someone. Okay? So, Let's see a few examples. The first one, qui est-ce qui parle? And then the answer could be, ma femme parle. My wife talks or is talking. Okay? So in that case, you can see that in the answer, the answer that you give see here, it's ma femme parle. Okay? So it's the subject, ma femme parle. And then the second example we had, it's, qui est-ce que tu regardes? Okay. Je regarde mon ami. Okay, mon ami, my friend. 
Regarder was to, to watch or to look. Okay? Je regarde mon ami. And you can see here that it's, well, basically it's quite clear. It's quite clear. So, qui, just because you want the information for a person. And then the second qui, just because it will be the subject. Ma femme parle. Okay? Here, qui, because it's the person. Mon ami, my friend, it's a person. And then que, just because, if you look carefully, it comes after your verb. Because it's not the subject, it's the object. Okay? Grammatical object. We're not talking about an object, but a grammatical object. So it can be a person, it could be a dog, animal, or an object if you want. Okay? So, je regarde mon ami. All right? Now, let's see que. First question. Qu'est-ce qui fait ce bruit? Okay? Second question, qu'est-ce que tu fais? All right. So, remember that even if you don't have the que here, but you get this qu, all right, it does mean that previously we had the e here and here, but then as usual, if you look carefully, we've got here another e starting here. So, we've got to take our e away, okay? So let's see now. First part, we use this que because we want to have to have the information regarding a thing. Okay, so we had qui previously, and it was for a person, and then que it's for a thing. So it's not for a person. So que will be for a thing when you start your, the the question with it. Okay, and then here. So remember, we've got this qui. Here, and then we've got this que here. Well, it will be exactly the same idea that we had previously. So you will use qui here just because you want the information regarding the subject of the verb. You've got the verb here to do. Okay. And then here you put this que just because you want to have the answer with the object of the verb. Okay. You've got the verb here. Faire, to do, same verb. But then you've got the subject. Tu fais, you do. Okay? So the first question, Qu'est-ce qui fait ce bruit? What is doing this noise? Qu'est-ce qui fait ce bruit? Or this sound, if you want. Qu'est-ce que tu fais? What are you doing? Okay? So let's see now the same Question. Qu'est-ce qui fait ce bruit? And the answer would be, la voiture de mon père fait ce bruit. Okay? My father's car. Okay? La voiture de mon père. So if you translate it directly, it's the car of my father. And then you've got the verb. Okay? But then this long thing is the subject. La voiture de mon père fait Ce bruit. Okay, so that's the reason why first we had this que, because in, it's a thing, it's not a person, okay? And then qui here, because it's the subject of the verb faire. Okay, second question, qu'est-ce que tu fais? So if you remember carefully, it was what are you doing? Qu'est-ce que tu fais? And the answer, je prépare un chocolat chaud. Okay, so I wanted to put another verb in the, the, the answer just to, 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 well, show you that is you don't really need to answer with the same, same verb, you know. Qu'est-ce que tu fais? What are you doing? Je prépare, so I prepare. Je prépare, and then this is the object of the verb. So the object, just let me repeat, uh, the gr grammatical object of the verb. So, je prépare un chocolat chaud. All right? So, now... Remember that we can, of course, construct these things with preposition. Okay, just because in French we've got uh, verbs and uh, verbs are in some cases uh, constructed with preposition. So you will need to remember these things. So preposition can be a, avec, de, pour, and then chez. Okay. A qui Est-ce que tu parles? Okay, remember, so, parler, to talk, is constructed with a, 
to talk to, ok? Parler à quelqu'un. So, if you want to know à qui est-ce que tu parles, who are you talking to, ok? À qui est-ce que tu parles? So, it doesn't change. You just need to first start with the preposition and then you continue your structure, ok? Uh, jouer, jouer, it's to play, ok? And then normally, if you're talking about a sports or activity, so sports or activity, then we tend to use this preposition a with it. Okay, so play, but then a, and then the name of the activity. It could be football, or it could be basketball, or it could be whatever. Okay, a quoi est-ce que tu joues? And then now, I assume that you will tell me, oh, oh have a look at that. What? on earth is going on why do we have this quoi and not que okay well because that's the rule and we'll see that but that's the rule in french if you want to construct a question like here with que but then it is constructed with a preposition then que will change and then it will become quoi okay that's the reason why Qui doesn't change, que will be transformed into quoi. So that's the reason why here we've got à quoi est-ce que tu joues. Okay? Now, avec qui est-ce que tu viens? So venir is coming avec with. Okay? Avec qui est-ce que tu viens? Avec quoi est-ce que tu écris? Écrire is to write. Okay? Same thing. With. Okay, and then it's exactly the same rule, remember, I told you that, que becomes quoi here, that's it, avec quoi est-ce que tu écris, okay, so remember, preposition with qui, no problem at all, but then preposition plus que, non, <laughs> you will have to use quoi. Okay, so remember that's quite important because it, it, it can sound a bit strange if, uh, if you're using this que instead of quoi with the preposition. Les nombres ordinaux. Les nombres ordinaux. Premier, première. Okay, so you've got here the English version, so first, okay. But then as usually in French, we've got the difference between the masculine form and the feminine form. Okay, so I will write... Here first, masculine, then feminine, and I will read both, okay? So, premier, première, deuxième, second, seconde. Okay, so it's quite interesting because here you've got deuxième, and then it doesn't change. It's uh, the masculine or the feminine form is exactly the same, so that's a good news. And then we've got here... Another option, second or seconde, okay? In that case, it does mean that nothing is coming after, okay? So, deuxième usually means that you've got after that third, fourth, etc., okay? But then, second normally, it's the end, okay? It's the second one, okay? Troisième, okay? Masculine form, feminine form, the same. Quatrième. Cinquième, sixième. Okay, one more time. Premier, première, deuxième, second, seconde, troisième, quatrième, cinquième, sixième, septième, huitième, neuvième, dixième. Onzième, douzième. So, so far, I assume that it's not that difficult. You've got to remember that it's M, okay? Septième, huitième, neuvième, dixième, onzième, douzième. Treizième, quatorzième, quinzième, seizième, dix-septième, 18e, ok? 13e, 14e, 15e, 16e, 17e, 18e, 19e, 20e, 21e, 22e, 23e, 24e, 
dix-huitième, dix-neuvième, vingtième, vingt-et-unième, centième, millième, mille et unième. Ok Dix-neuvième, vingtième, vingt-et-unième, centième, millième, mille et unième. In this lesson, we'll only focus on the verb être. Ok So it will be a short one, but still quite important. Je serai, tu serais, il serait, elle serait, nous serions, vous seriez, il serait, elle serait. All right, so remember, conditionnel présent, so if you want to translate directly this je serais, it's I would be, okay? But in French, we've got only one form like that. Remember, so A, I, S, but then you don't pronounce the final S. Je serai. Same rule here, no pronunciation of the final S, tu serais. Phonetically, it is the same. And then the good news here, it will be exactly the same. So final T is not pronounced. So phonetically, you've got the same form as we had previously. Il serait, elle serait. Okay, so one more time. Je serais, tu serais, il serait, elle serait. All right, so then... Final S not pronounced, and then this is this yon, yon, remember, it goes in your nose, it's a nasal, yon, nous serions. Okay, then, vous seriez, and last but not least, and remember, it's quite strange, but A, I, E, N, T, many letters, only one simple sound, E, as we had here, here, and here, it's exact, exactly the same sound, il serait, elle serait. All right. Je serais, tu serais, il serait, elle serait, nous serions, vous seriez, il serait, elle serait. In this lesson, we'll focus on the conditional present form of avoir, to have, okay? So, let's see now how it goes. J'aurais, tu aurais, il aurait, elle aurait, nous aurions, vous auriez, ils auraient, elles auraient. All right, so if you remember carefully, this conditional present form, so it was introduced in this unit, so check, uh, check the unit 7 and then put uh, conditional present, you will find the whole description and the, the, the whole lesson of uh, conditional present, but still, here, you can see that j'aurais, well, if you want to translate it directly, it would be I would have, okay? But then in French, we've got only one form here. And then take a good look at the endings. A-I-S, A-I-S, A-I-T, I-O-N-S, I-E-Z, I-U-N-T, okay? The endings for the conditional present form, okay? So let's see how you pronounce them now. J'aurais, so final S, not pronounced. J'aurais. Then same thing here, tu aurais, you don't pronounce the final S. Il aurait, same thing here, final T is not pronounced, elle aurait, okay? So you get the same pronunciation here for the three first forms. J'aurais, tu aurais, il aurait, elle aurait, okay? Then, nous aurions, so this little link between the two, this liaison, nous aurions, final S not pronounced. Vous auriez, little link between the two, vous auriez, And then, ils auraient, little link, but then, look, A-I-E-N-T, like that, and you only pronounce E, like we had here, it will be exactly the same pronunciation here. Ils auraient, elles auraient. Okay, so let's see that one more time. J'aurais, tu aurais, il aurait, elle aurait, nous aurions, vous auriez, ils auraient, elles auraient. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent and this is Unité 7, Leçon K. And in this lesson we'll discover together uh, the verb aller, so aller means to go, and especially the conditionnel present form of this verb. Okay, so let's start right now. The first form goes like 
J'irai. Tu irais. Il irait. Elle irait. Nous irions. Vous iriez. Ils iraient. Elles iraient. Ok, so let's check them one more time. The first one, j'irai. Ok, remember, final S not pronounced. J'irai. Tu irais. Same thing here, final S not pronounced. Tu irais. And then, il, masculine form, irait, final T not pronounced. So what you can see is that these, these form, this form and this form are actually pronounced the same way. Ok, so il irait. Elle irait. Ok, then, nous irions. Ok, so let's make this little liaison between the two. Nous irions. Final S, not pronounced. Nous irions. Then, vous iriez. So, same thing here, make the liaison. Vous iriez. Remember, when you get this EZ at the end, you get the sound E. Ok, iriez. Iriez. And then, vous iriez. All right, and the final form, ils iraient, okay, so remember, make the liaison as well, you get this S and then the vowel after, so ils iraient, and then if you look carefully, you get A, I, E, N, T, okay, but then phonetically, it goes like E, okay, so technically, these form and these forms here are pronounced the same way, and it goes like iraient, okay, so ils iraient, and then the feminine, elles iraient. All right, so, j'irai, tu irais, il irait, elle irait, nous irions, vous iriez, ils iraient, elles iraient. OK, so that's it for the conditionnel présent form of the verb aller, aller, remember, it was to go, and then uh, you get the YouTube channel here, and it's uh, youtube.com slash imagier, if you want more videos, and then the website is here, and it's waiting for you, imagier.net, have a great day, bye bye, and it's uh, lequel and laquelle, okay, so first thing, well, let's see what lequel is, lequel, well, basically, it's when you want to replace this quel, so, the meaning of quel is what, okay, then plus a noun, d'accord, so quel plus un nom, okay, and when you want to replace this group, so what plus a noun, then you can have the lequel instead, okay, remember that in that case, we'll see that a bit later in this lesson, but lequel, it will be for the singular masculine okay then let's see how it goes for the feminine form singular as well so it will be laquelle okay and then it will replace this quel so what but in that case as you remember probably we've got the feminine and the masculine form plus a noun so plus un nom okay so if you want to replace quel plus un nom then you will have to use laquelle so this is the feminine form and this is the singular feminine form okay so let's see now the singular form and the plural form so the first form that we'll see will be the masculine so it will be as we saw lequel okay so remember you get to pronounce it lequel even if you get this q u okay remember that this u phonetically doesn't exist so lequel then for the plural form, you will add this S here and then S at the end, okay? And it will give you the pronunciation lequel, all right? So final S is not pronounced. So here, when you get this L-E-S, okay? It's just like the article, if you remember, le, le, okay? So it goes like lequel, all right? And then the feminine form, so singular, we saw it laquelle, okay? So Basically, same rule, Q-U, U is not pronounced here, and then you get this E, double L, E, well, phonetically here, it is the same as what we have here, so, laquelle. So, the only difference between the feminine and the masculine form is this first part, okay? Laquelle, lequel, 
all right phonetically I mean now of course if you write them uh, you get to put this double L uh, here and then let's see for the plural form so it will be quite logical in a way because we will have this plural form so le okay as we had here le okay and then quel you just add this final s at the end okay and the good news is that phonetically it's lequel here for the masculine form and then lequel for the feminine form all right so phonetically it's exactly the same when we talk about the plural form here but then if you want to write it correctly remember that for the masculine it will be a l s at the end here and then a l l a s at the end for the feminine all right so let's see a few examples so the first one il y a deux cafés okay so if you want to translate directly it would be there are two coffees lequel veux tu so of course you could ask the same question and you could put this quel café veux tu what <laughs> let's put it let's translate it straight it would be more more clear quel café veux tu would be translated like what coffee do you want okay in that case okay when you use this lequel well technically you could translate it directly like which one okay which one do you want okay so il y a deux cafés lequel so in that case just to avoid repeating quel café okay veux-tu so remember vouloir is to want to you okay do you want so lequel veux-tu il y a deux cafés lequel veux-tu all right or then it's possible as well in that case it's more let's say spoken okay the first one is uh, the official one because in that case you put lequel and after that you change the order remember first the verb then the subject because that's the official and the formal way to ask a question but then if you speak normally it's possible to well put the order a bit differently so il y a deux cafés so this doesn't change of course okay tu veux lequel all right so you just keep the normal order so you've got the subject here you've got the verb here and then you put lequel at the end okay tu veux lequel all right meaning is the same but then it's better to use this second form orally and the first form if you get to write then use this first form okay so let's see another example so deux bus arrivent okay so two buses arrive lequel prenez-vous remember prendre is to take huh? vous you okay so you could be the, the the plural form or then it could be the polite form for you okay so lequel prenez-vous which one do you take all right or then it could be as well as we saw in the previous example you just keep the normal order so subject verb vous prenez lequel all right and then another example voici les pâtisseries laquelle choisissez-vous okay choisir to choose voici les pâtisseries laquelle choisissez-vous all right same thing here voici les pâtisseries vous choisissez laquelle all right so you can see that in that case it's the same we just keep the normal order so subject verb and then laquelle all right so now you've got lequel lequel and laquelle remember phonetically well basically this second part quel doesn't change if you want to pronounce it okay so les professions so many many words I hope you're ready because it will be quite useful and maybe a bit long. <laughs> Let's try to see that together. Okay, so we'll start right now. Un menuisier. Un électricien. Un plombier. Un maçon. Un agent immobilier. Un opticien. Okay, so let's see them one more time. 
un menuisier. Remember this ui, 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 menuisier. All right. Then un électricien. So you can see that we make the liaison here. Un électricien. I e n i e n, électricien. All right. Then un plombier. Remember o m goes like o n, so it's on on plombier. All right. Un maçon. Here you can see that we've got this little cédille beneath the C, okay? And it just means that you will pronounce this C as S, okay? So that's the reason why. It's un maçon. Son, okay? O-N in your nose, nasal, un maçon, all right? Then, liaison here, un agent immobilier. Same thing here, un opticien. OK, next page. Un dentiste. Un docteur. Un jardinier. Un agent d'entretien. Un mécanicien. Un boucher. All right, so let's see them one more time. Un dentiste. Remember, nasal, dent, dentiste. Un docteur, e u r e r e r, un docteur. Un jardinier, remember i e r i e i e, jardinier. Un agent d'entretien, liaison here, un agent d'entretien. Un mécanicien, remember i e n i e n, like here i e n i e n. Un boucher. C -h, ch -ch -ch -ch, un boucher, boucher. So I tend to insist a little bit, but then it goes like un boucher. Okay? Next page. Un coiffeur. Un bijoutier. Un pharmacien. Un infirmier. Un vétérinaire. Un fermier. Okay, so let's see them now. Un coiffeur, remember, O-I goes like wa wa wa, quoi, and then e u r e r. Un coiffeur, then we've got un bijoutier, un pharmacien. So remember, P H. So these combination of these two letters will produce the F sound, fa fa, pharmacien. Okay, un pharmacien. Okay, then. Liaison here, un infirmier, un infirmier, i e r at the end, yé, yé, infirmier, ok, then, un vétérinaire, remember, accent aigu, accent aigu, will give you this e sound, v, t, ri, and then here it's open, r, un vétérinaire, and then, un fermier, ok, let's see the next page. Un pêcheur, un marin, un policier, un militaire, un gardien, un pompier. All right, so let's see them. Un pêcheur. So remember when you get this accent circonflex, you know that's the name of this accent. On the top of E, it will open the sound, so you get E. A, really open, okay? So, pêcheur, pêcheur, and then e u r e r, okay? Un pêcheur, all right? Then, un marin, i n nasal, un, okay? Un marin, all right? Then, un policier, i e r i e, un policier, all right? Then, un militaire, remember a i, it's this a sound as well, a. Militaire. All right. Then, un gardien. I-E-N here. Yen. Un gardien. All right. Then, un pompier. So, remember I was a <laughs> what I told you. When you get this O-M here, it will give you the sound on. So, exactly the same sound as this O-N. All right. So, in your nose, pom, pom, pompier. All right. Next page now. Un avocat. Un comptable, un architecte, 
un scientifique, un instituteur, un bibliothécaire. All right, so let's see them. Un avocat, so remember, liaison here and then final T not pronounced, ok? Un avocat, un comptable, so OM, remember, it goes like on, all right? And then, strangely, this P is not pronounced. Un comptable, all right? Then, un architecte, same thing here, liaison, ok? Un, a, un architecte, all right? And then, CH, Ch -ch -ch architecte, all right? Then, un scientifique, un instituteur, OK, so liaison here, and then remember this E, U, it goes like ER, ER, with the R, instituteur. Then un bibliothécaire, biblioté, remember in French the H doesn't exist, so you don't pronounce it. Bibliothécaire, un bibliothécaire. All right, so let's see the others. Un réceptionniste. Un facteur, un conducteur, un camionneur, un chauffeur de taxi, un pilote. Ok, so let's see them. Un réceptionniste. Ok, remember when you get this T-I-O-N, so normally it will give you this S. I mean, I'm talking about the T here, okay? So, sioniste, okay? Réceptionniste, all right? Then, un facteur, e u r e un facteur. Then, un conducteur, O-N, on, conducteur. Un camionneur, camionneur. Un chauffeur de taxi, okay? a u o Then e u r e chauffeur, un chauffeur de taxi, un pilote. Okay, this one is quite easy. Un chef, un musicien, un danseur, un comédien, un chanteur, un serveur. Okay, so let's see them. Un chef, so remember, CH, it will give you the sh, sh sound. Un chef, okay? Then, un musicien. Un musicien. Un danseur. Remember, nasal here, A, N, en, un danseur. Un comédien. I, E, N, yen. Comédien. E, accent aigu here, gives you the E sound. Comédien, all right? Then, un chanteur, un serveur, un barman, well, this one is not that difficult, un sculpteur, un sportif, un peintre, un photographe, un journaliste. All right, so, un barman, un sculpteur, same thing here, this P here is not pronounced, so, sculpteur, un sculpteur, un sportif, un peintre, so remember when you get this E, I, N together here, then you pronounce this un sound, so nasal in your nose, un peintre. All right, and remember, final E uh here is not pronounced. It only gives you the pro possibility to pronounce these two letters. So, tr, tr, okay? Un peintre, all right? Un photographe. So here, P-H, and here, P-H, pronounce it like F, 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 F. Photographe, okay? Same thing here, this E, uh, you don't insist on it. You only pronounce this F. At the end, un photographe, okay? Un journaliste, same thing here. You know, final e only gives you the t. Journaliste, okay? Un barman again. 
Oh no, a sculpteur. So I've been putting two times the same page. Well, let's repeat it. Un sportif, un peintre, un photographe, un journaliste. Okay, so let's see the last page. Un rédacteur, un dessinateur, un couturier. Okay, so un rédacteur. All right, remember, E accent aigu here, so you will have this E sound. Rédac, and then this ER, okay? Un dessinateur, and then un couturier. Remember, OU goes like OU, okay? Couturier. I, E, R, I, E, I, E, okay? Un, courtu un couturier. This lesson, I, I thought it might be useful for you to have some vocabulary regarding cuisiner, so cuisiner is to cook, just because French people like to talk about food, they like to talk about uh, cooking and all these things, so it's usually quite useful to have few words or few verbs to, to be able to discuss about that, okay? And especially at this level, unité 7, I think it might be the time. So let's start now. Éplucher, battre, Faire mijoter, pocher, griller. Okay, so let's see them one more time. Éplucher, okay, remember when we've got this CH, the sound is SH, okay. Éplucher, all right. First group of verbs, okay, ending with ER, so basically it is quite easy to conjugate. Okay, then battre, battre, okay, even if you've got deux here two letters well basically you've got only the sound of one okay battre okay third group of verbs a bit tricky to conjugate but still it's possible at your level then faire mijoter okay faire mijoter then pocher okay first group Griller, okay? It's interesting because here you've got this E and then double L, okay? In most of the cases, and I don't say always because it's not possible in French to say always, we've got so many exceptions, but in most of the cases you will pronounce it Y, Y, okay? Griller, that's the reason why. Griller, okay? Remember, uh, R because these are verbs here. Griller, pocher, éplucher, okay? You pronounce them a, okay, even if you've got this air, okay, this combination of two letters, a air at the end will give you the sound a, all right, so griller, okay, let's see the others. Rotir, cuire au four, bouillir, frire, couper, all right, so rotir, don't forget this accent circumflex, sorry. Then, cuire au four, bouillir, so that's maybe the, the tricky one of the list here. So, bou, and then, yir, okay? Bouillir, so, bou, yir, bouillir, okay? Frir, and then, couper. Well, couper is quite easy. First group here, so je coupe, tu coupes, il coupe. Nous coupons, vous coupez, il coupe. So quite easy to conjugate. Couper en tranches. Râper. Étaler au rouleau. Remuer. Mélanger. Okay, so let's see them. So here you get this couper again, okay. En tranches. So, tranche is a slice, okay? So, in that case, couper en tranche. Râper. So, don't forget this accent circumflex here. First group of verb, easy to conjugate. Étaler au rouleau. Okay? Étaler. So, first group of verbs, quite easy to make. Then, remuer. So, this, maybe it's the difficult one of the list. Remu, mu, 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 okay? Remuer, remuer. And then, mélanger. Okay, remember, G, E, goes like J, J, okay? 
mélanger, mélanger. All right? Les plats d'un repas. So, it will be a short lesson, but still, in the previous lesson, we saw that um, all the verbs, uh, well, the main verbs that we can use in French to uh, discuss about uh, cooking and how to prepare uh, a dish. And now, we'll see les plats d'un repas. Okay? So, un apéritif, une entrée, Un plat principal, un fromage, okay, so let's see that, un apéritif, so here you get the liaison between the two, un apéritif, okay, and then you get the A accent aigu, so it goes like, et, un apéritif, then une entrée, une entrée, okay, remember, well, technically this final A uh, here is not pronounced, so phonetically it doesn't exist, so it's E, ok? Entrée. Remember, nasal here, en, entrée. Une entrée. Then, un plat principal, final T here, not pronounced. Un plat principal. I-N, remember, it's nasal, it goes in your nose. Un, un, principal. Un plat principal. Alright? Then, un fromage. Ok, remember, G-E-J, J. Okay, in that case, you don't insist on the final E. J. Fromage. Un fromage. Alright. Then, une salade. Un dessert. Un café. Alright, so, une salade. Same thing here. Final E. You don't insist on it. It only gives you the pronunciation of the previous letter. So, D. Salade. Salade, ok? Une salade, un dessert, ok? So, remember that we've got here two S, ok? That's the reason why you pronounce it S, and then it opens the E. Dessert, un dessert. So, you don't say un dessert, ok? But you say un dessert. Final T, not pronounced. Un dessert, alright? Un café. Ok, remember, accent aigu here, un café, un café. Ok? Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent and this is Unité 7, leçon P. And in this lesson, we'll discover together le conditionnel passé. So, maybe some of you might think that it's a bit early to introduce this conditionnel passé form because normally... It comes a bit later, but still, I think that we've been introduced this conditionnel présent form in this unit, so it's still warm, and I still have the feeling, and I have the feeling that normally it should be okay for avoir and être, so at the conditionnel présent, that's the reason why I think it might be useful to introduce this conditionnel passé form, especially because it's not that difficult if you master the conditionnel présent form and then the passé composé, I mean by that, these participe passé forms, okay? So we'll see how it goes. And then the first thing that we'll see in this lesson is l'utilisation, okay? So when do we use this conditionnel passé form? And the second thing that we'll work on is la formation, so the way we make it or we build it. Okay, so let's start with the first one, so utilisation, okay? And then the first use that we will have for this conditionnel passé it's to express regrets, exprimer les regrets, exprimer des regrets, okay? So that's the first, well, one of the first use, let's say. The second one would be une information non confirmée. So if you're looking at the news, for instance, and then they want to talk about something that happened, but then they don't have all the... Uh, elements to con confirm this information. So normally in that case, they just use this conditionnel passé form, okay? And then something, I mean the last one would be imaginer des situations irréelles dans le passé. So you want to imagine some situations that, well, technically are not real and they take place in the past. So that's the use of le conditionnel passé. Okay, so first one, exprimer des regrets here. Second use, information non confirmée. 
and then the last one, imaginez des situations irréelles dans le passé. Ok? And now, let's see how we make this conditionnel passé. All right? So, first example I wanted to put is je mangerai au restaurant. Ok? So, this sentence, if you remember, we saw that in, uh, well, these units anyway, when we introduced this conditionnel Présent form, ok? So, you've got the verb. The verb is manger. Je mangerai au restaurant. And then, if you look at the conditionnel passé, well, it will go like, j'aurai mangé au restaurant. Ok? Second example. Tu regarderais la télévision. Tu aurais regardé la télévision. Ok? So, same thing here. The first one is at the conditionnel présent form. Second one, conditionnel passé form. And then, il irait au travail would become il serait allé au travail. Alright. So, if you look carefully, then what you can see? I mean, you can see first that it is composed. So, you've got two parts. The first one here is avoir Then you've got what we called and what we saw previously for the passé composé form. This is participe passé, okay? Past participle. Here the same way. Have a look. It's avoir and then it's the past participle. Regardez. And here we've got être and here we've got the past participle. So maybe if you want to construct this conditionnel passé form, You will have first to use avoir, like we saw, but then avoir should be at the conditionnel present form. Okay? Then you will put after this participe passé form that we saw previously when we introduced the passé composé, because that's the second part that we use for the passé composé as well. All right, so first, avoir, at the conditionnel present form, plus participe passé, past participle, then you will get your conditionnel passé form. Okay? But we saw as well that in some cases, we'll use être, but then same thing, it should be at the conditionnel present form, whoops, <laughs> plus participe passé, so it doesn't change, and it will give you Conditionnel passé. Okay, so you get to remember that in most of the cases, in most of the cases, you will use avoir. Okay, so if you're not sure, if you've got a doubt, then put avoir. Okay, if you know that it should be constructed with être, then put être, of course. Okay, in both cases, remember that should be they should be at the conditionnel présent form. All right, so we'll see. So the verbs that will require être will be the following. Aller, to go. Arriver, to arrive. Descendre, to go down. Devenir, to become. Entrer, to enter, to come in, to go in. Monter, to go up. Mourir, to die. Naître, born. Partir, to leave. Rester, to stay. Retourner, to return. Sortir, to go out. Tomber, to fall. Venir, to come. Okay, so all these verbs will require être for this conditionnel passé form. And then if you remember what we've been seeing for the passé composé, uh, well, there are exactly the same verbs that will requ require être, whether for the passé composé or then for the conditionnel passé. And the good news is that we've got other composed tenses in French, and this list will be always the same. So it means that this list of verbs that will require être will be the same for all these composed tenses. Okay? So remember, one more time, aller, arriver, descendre, devenir, entrer, monter, 
mourir, naître, partir, rester, retourner, sortir, tomber, venir. Ok, so remember, you will have to use être with these verbs. Ok, so as I said, être, but then for the conditionnel passé, être should be conjugated at the conditionnel présent. All right, so let's see that. But then the other uh, group of verbs that will require all the time être will be what we call les verbes réfléchis, so reflexive verbs, okay? And they usually goes like se regarder, okay? Se regarder, s'appeler, se présenter. So they will use être for this conditionnel passé form, but then, well, it, I mean, they are the, exactly the same verbs, you know, as we saw for this part, uh, passé composé, so it is always the same rule, okay? So, se regarder, s'appeler, se présenter, so all the reflexive verbs will require être at the conditionnel passé. Okay, so let's see now how avoir and être how they go at the conditionnel présent, because that's the first part that you will have to put. So it's j'aurais, tu aurais, il aurait, elle aurait, nous aurions, vous auriez, ils auraient, elles auraient. Okay, so that's what you will use in most of the cases. Okay, so let's see that, let's see it one more time. J'aurais, remember, final S not pronounced. Tu aurais, same thing here, final S not pronounced. Il aurait, elle aurait, final T not pronounced. Nous aurions, liaison here, this little link, nous aurions, final S not pronounced. Vous auriez, liaison here, and then a Z will go like E. Vous auriez, okay, and the last one. Ils auraient, so liaison here. Elles auraient. And then look, if you've got A, I, E, N, T, then phonetically it goes like aurait. Okay, so phonetically you've got aurait here, aurait, aurait, and here as well, aurait. Okay, so it's quite easy to produce orally. And then être, je serais, tu serais, il serait, elle serait, nous serions, vous seriez, il serait, elle serait. Okay, so we'll see that one more time. Je serais, same thing here, final S not pronounced. Tu serais, final S not pronounced. Il serait, final T not pronounced. Elle serait. Nous serions, final S not pronounced. Vous seriez. So here when you have, a, whoa, when you have got this a Z at the end, then you get the sound E. Seriez. So, vous seriez, okay, and the last one, il serait, A-I-E-N-T here, phonetically it goes like E, okay, serait, elle serait. So, same thing here, we've got serait here, phonetically I mean, serait, serait, and serait. So, the same sound, okay. And then, for the second part that we use, so what we call le participe passé, so, The thing is that for the first group of verbs, so normally the first group of verbs, we talk about the verbs ending at the infinitive form with a air. Okay? So these verbs are quite easy because if you've got, well, have a look at the, the, the first example that I put, and it's parler, parler, to speak, to talk. So you can see that it ends with a air here. It's here. Okay? So this is the infinitive form, so the basic form of the verb. Okay, and then the participe passé, so this past participle, will be like that, a uh, accent aigu, so parler, all right? Then the verb regarder, a uh, air here, will follow the same rule, regarder, like that, with the accent, accent aigu. And here, when we talk about the first group of verbs, we are really talking about a lot of verbs, okay? So, many, many verbs will follow this simple rule, okay? So, the second part that you will use for this conditionnel passé, 
will be written like that if the verb is belonging to the first group of verb. Even the verb aller. Aller to go, remember, it's a tricky verb normally when you conjugate it, especially at the present form. But for this past participle form, it is quite easy because it goes like a l l e accent aigu. So it does follow the same rule. This er become e like that. Okay? Second group of verb, so regular verbs, not all the er verbs. Okay? Quite easy as well. Let's take choisir. Choisir is to choose. Okay? er like that and it will become e. Finir, to finish or to end. er and it will become e. Unir, to unite. er and it will become e. So it's quite easy. Okay? Choisir, choisi. Finir, fini. Unir, uni. So of course, we've got exceptions because we're talking about the third group of verbs. And then this one is, well, it, it's tricky. I mean, we've got to be honest with that. The first advice I would give you is to try to remember them by heart, okay? And I've been making um, a video about these uh, tricky uh, participe passé, okay? But then, here, we can have a look at them. So, subgroups here, talking about the one ending with U, okay? So, for example, connaître, to know, will become connu, okay? Voir, to see, will become vu, okay? Ending with I, partir, will become parti, Partir is to leave. Rire, to laugh, will become ri. Okay? The one ending with it, like here. Écrire, to write, écrit. Dire, to say, dire. Uh, sorry, di. <laughs> Getting tired. And then is, mettre, will become mi. Mettre means to put. Prendre, to take, will become pri. Okay? So here you've got the past participle, so the, the, the participe passé of these verbs here, okay? So we'll take one example. The example will be parler, parler is to talk or to speak, okay? So we will have at the conditionnel passé form, if you remember, so first part here is avoir at the conditionnel présent, then here we've got the participe passé of Parler. And it will give you J'aurais parlé. Tu aurais parlé. Il aurait parlé. Elle aurait parlé. Nous aurions parlé. Vous auriez parlé. Ils auraient parlé. Elles auraient parlé. Okay? So I wanted to put this E like that in another color just to tell you that if you've got a normal structure like that, so you've got the subject and then you've got the verb, okay, nothing in between, so subject, verb, then if you use avoir, exactly the same rule as we saw for the passé composé, so if you use avoir here, you won't have to modify your participe passé. So it will change, it won't, it won't change, sorry, it will stay like a accent aigu, Okay? Even if it's the singular, the plural, or then the feminine. Okay? It doesn't change. So it will stay like parler. All right? But if you use être, like here, il serait allé. Okay? So remember, allé was belonging to this group of verbs that require être, okay, to construct this conditionnel passé, all right, il serait allé. So in that case, you can see that at the end, it's allé like that without anything after. But then, if we look at the feminine form, elle serait allé, you will have to add this e at the end, okay? Remember, e in most of the cases, when you have to add something, it's the mark of the feminine. Okay, so, elle serait allée. Okay, but then phonetically it doesn't exist. All right, so it's 
aller here and then aller here the way you pronounce it but if you want to write correctly you should put it and then the same thing for the plural we will have to put the plural and then the mark of the plural the thing that we've got to add at the end will be s the good news as well you don't pronounce it as usual in French you write it you don't pronounce it okay so it doesn't change it's aller here aller and then aller okay phonetically the same thing but remember it's just a question of well being correct if you want to write it okay and then logically feminine plural then you should add a mark of the feminine as we had previously and s mark of the plural and guess what you don't pronounce it okay so phonetically it's aller 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 and aller all right but you need to write them okay so let's see now the full thing so je serai aller okay and then if you want to make the liaison it would be more beautiful je serai aller tu serais allé il serait allé, elle serait allée. Nous serions allés. Vous seriez allés. Il serait allé, elle serait allée. All right, so that's it. And then one example with these reflexive verbs that we saw. And then, well, I just wanted to use this se présenter. Okay, so je me serais présenté. Tu te serais présenté Il se serait présenté Elle se serait présentée Nous nous serions présentés Vous vous seriez présenté Il se serait présenté Elle se serait présentée All right, so if it's not really clear yet for these uh, reflexive verbs, I mean, the way you should conjugate them, I definitely advise you to check the, the, the lesson uh, regarding these uh, reflexive verbs because uh, I've been making one video regarding that so it would be it would be easier for you to understand the way we construct it especially in that case why we put this je me tuto etc okay all right so remember the last thing that you should remember before ending this lesson is that when you construct this conditionnel passé so in most of the cases you will have to use avoir at the conditional present form then the participe passé and it will give you conditional passé okay in some exceptions so we saw the list of verbs you should really try to remember them by heart i know it's not easy but you know try your best and then the the reflexive verbs okay so for these exceptions we will use être at the conditional present form then the participe passé and it will give you this conditionnel passé form. Okay. I hope it was clear. Uh, YouTube.com slash Imagier. That's the place where you can find all the videos. And then the website is here. Imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye bye. Beauté et hygiène. So let's start now. La beauté. Une brosse. Un démaquillant, un peigne, un poudrier. Okay, so let's see them one more time. La beauté. Remember, we've got this combination of e, a, u here of the the vowels. Okay, but then it will give you the sound o. Beauté. Okay, la beauté. All right. Then une brosse. Remember, don't insist on this final e. Uh, brosse. Un démaquillant, so we've got this Q, U, but then U is not pronounced, so you get the sound qui, okay? And then, remember, double L after E will give you the sound y, 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 démaquillant, final T not pronounced, démaquillant, okay? And this is nasal, in your nose, en démaquillant. Then, un peigne. Final E, you don't insist on it. It's ny, ny, the last sound. And then this E, E combination will give you this E, open E, un peigne. All right? Un poudrier. 
OK, remember, O-U, ou, pou, poudrier. All right. Un bigoudi. Un fer à friser. Un gant de toilette. Un gel. Un sèche-cheveux. OK, so let's see them. Un bigoudi. It's quite funny to pronounce, isn't it? Bigoudi, OK? But not difficult. Un fer à friser. Un gant de toilette. Remember, G-A goes like ga, OK? g g, -g. But in that case, you've got this A-N, so it's nasal, gant. And then final T is not pronounced here. Un gant, gant de toilette. Un gel. Un sèche. So this one is a bit tricky. So remember, we've got this E uh, accent grave here. So it's really open. E, sèche. Sh, sh, OK, sèche. And then cheveux. Usually this one is a bit of a problem because some of the students normally pronounce it chevaux. OK, so try to keep in mind that you get E, U here. So it goes like E. Uh, okay, and then final X not pronounced, fi sorry, final X, <laughs> should pronounce it the French way, final X is not pronounced, so you get ch, and then you get V, okay, cheveux, okay, and the full thing, un sèche cheveux, all right, une laque, une hygiène, un crayon à lèvres, un rouge à lèvres, un maquillage. All right, so let's see them. Une laque. Remember the rule when you get this Q, U, well, U is not pronounced. So you get K, K, like that. Une laque. Une hygiène. So remember, we've got this Y here, vowel, and it's pronounced like I. E, 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 okay? Hygiene. H doesn't exist. H doesn't exist in French. So, hygiene. Un crayon à lèvres. Final S, not pronounced. Lèvres. Okay? And then when you get this Y between two vowels, z, <laughs> then you will have this cré. So, like if you would have I e here. A, I, cré. And then another E here, yon, crayon, un crayon à lèvres, un rouge à lèvres, same thing here, final S not pronounced, and then this E accent grave here, it gives you the E, really open sound, lèvres, all right, un maquillage, okay, so here, same, same rule, Q, U, but then U is not pronounced, so qui, and then Y, Y. Maquillage. Une crème hydratante. Un coupe-ongle. Un vernis à ongles. Un parfum. Un shampoing. Ok, so let's cover them together. Une crème hydratante. So remember. H is not existing, and then this Y is pronounced like I. Hydratante. Okay, don't insist on the final E, and this is nasal. Hydratante. Un coupe-ongle. Okay, O-N, remember, nasal, on, ongle. Un coupe-ongle. Un vernis à ongles. Final S here not pronounced, same thing here. Vernis à ongles. Un parfum. So remember, even if you've got this U-M like that, phonetically it's exactly the same thing as if you would have U-N. So it's nasal and it's un. So it really goes in your nose. You don't pronounce the M at all. Un. Okay? So par fin. Parfum. Okay? Un parfum. And then, un shampoing. Okay, this is a strange one, really. 
try to listen to me and repeat so maybe you shouldn't visualize the the, the word but still it goes like shampoing okay shampoing one more time shampoing okay the, the full thing shampoing okay Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 7, Leçon R. And I've been thinking that I could make maybe two videos, so it would be the first one regarding the verbs, okay? Uh, so just to give you quite many verbs, because at this level, at this stage, normally you should definitely try to learn as much or as many verbs as possible and then vocabulary is the same, okay? So we will start right now. Avoir, posséder. Okay, so for each verb, okay, I will first put the direct translation of the verb and then maybe, you know, one or two other verbs, okay. So it's uh, really important to just keep in mind that the first one is the direct translation, okay. So the first one that you should use in almost all the contexts, okay. But in some cases, it's possible to use the other options depending on the context or the situation, okay. But then, so avoir, posséder, être, aller, s'en aller, obtenir, recevoir, avoir, pouvoir, okay, one more time, avoir, posséder, être, Aller, s'en aller, obtenir, recevoir, avoir, pouvoir. Voir, regarder, venir, faire, fabriquer, savoir, connaître. Prendre, saisir. So let's repeat them one more time. Voir, regarder, venir, faire, fabriquer, savoir, connaître. So for these two verbs, I've been making one video, okay, that you can find if you use the search engine in uh, YouTube, okay, because, well, Really, they mean exactly the same thing, okay? But it's just a construction that you will have to uh, modify if you use savoir and then connaître, okay? Prendre, saisir. Penser, réfléchir. Mettre, placer. Vouloir, avoir envie de, désirer, dire, raconter, dire, déclarer. Okay? Penser, réfléchir, mettre, placer, vouloir, avoir envie de, Désirer, dire, raconter, dire, déclarer, donner, offrir, aimer bien, aimer, apprécier, regarder, travailler, Écrire, donner, offrir, aimer bien, aimer, apprécier, regarder, travailler, écrire, trouver, retrouver, jouer. Falloir, devoir, 
utiliser, courir, se précipiter, trouver, retrouver, jouer, falloir, devoir, utiliser, courir, se précipiter, apporter, amener, montrer, exposer, présenter, garder, retenir, conserver, aider, assister, épauler, placer, poster, mettre, apporter, amener, montrer, exposer, présenter, garder, retenir, conserver, aider, assister, épauler, placer, poster, mettre. So that's it for the first part of the verbs. Okay, so the next lesson will be exactly the same thing. Um, I mean the same thing, no, but the same concept, but other verbs. Okay, so the video can be found here. Okay, and then the all the others as well. And the website is here. Okay, have a great day. Bye-bye. Les verbes, okay, so it will be the second part of the uh, the list of the verbs that I wanted to, to, to give you before the end of this unité set, okay, and so let's start. Essayer, tenter, okay, so just to repeat, if you didn't check that, uh, well, if you didn't see that the first video, so I will put each time the first verb here, uh, it would be the direct translation of this verb okay so it will apply uh, well it will be the same meaning in almost all the contexts okay and then the second or third or maybe fourth option uh, it will be a translation that would be possible in some situations okay but not all okay but still essayer tenter demander interroger lire Appeler, partir, essayer, tenter, demander, interroger, lire, appeler, partir, entendre, ouïr, démarrer, commencer, Entamer, espérer, souhaiter, tourner, retourner, avoir besoin de, nécessité, entendre, ouïr, démarrer, commencer, entamer, espérer, souhaiter, Tourner, retourner, avoir besoin de, nécessité. Se sentir, croire que, ouvrir, arrêter, cesser, payer, régler, acheter. Se sentir, croire que, ouvrir, arrêter, cesser, payer, régler, acheter. Porter, transporter, marcher, se promener, rester, séjourner. Envoyer, expédier, rencontrer, retrouver, se réunir, porter, 
transporter, marcher, se promener, rester, séjourner, envoyer, expédier, rencontrer, retrouver, se réunir. Croire, souhaiter, désirer, couper, tailler, se souvenir, se rappeler, tomber, croire, souhaiter, désirer, couper, tailler, se souvenir, se rappeler, tomber. Manger, se restaurer, aimer, adorer, patienter, attendre, fermer, finir, terminer. Manger, se restaurer, aimer, adorer, patienter, attendre, fermer. Finir, terminer. Au oh, café, so quite useful. Un serveur. Une table. Une terrasse de café. Un crème. Un noir. Un expresso. Ok, so one more time. Un serveur. Une table. Une terrasse de café, un crème, remember, un accent grave, eh, eh, un crème, un noir, un expresso. Ok, remember, we've got this X here. Ex expresso. Ok. Un cappuccino, un chocolat chaud, un café glacé, un thé, un thé vert. Un thé blanc, All right. so, un cappuccino, not really difficult to produce, un chocolat chaud, remember c'est ch ch chaud, chocolat, and then final day not pronounced, chaud, final day not pronounced. Un café glacé, un thé, remember H is not pronounced, un thé vert, final thé not pronounced. Un thé vert, un thé blanc, final C, not pronounced, un thé blanc, ok Un thé nature, une tisane, une camomille, un thé au lait, un thé au citron, un thé glacé. Un thé nature, une tisane... Une camomille, so remember when we get this E and then double L, it goes like Y, Y, mille, mille, camomille, une camomille, un thé au lait, final thé not pronounced, un thé au citron, un thé glacé, un jus d'orange, un jus de pomme, un jus de tomate. All right. Un jus d'orange, un jus de pomme. In most of the cases, French people will pronounce it like un jus de pomme. D, d, jus de pomme. All right. And then same thing here, un jus de tomate. Okay, so you don't insist on the d, jus de, jus de tomate. <laughs> I know it's quite difficult to produce, but still try. So, un jus d'orange, here it's not difficult. Un jus de pomme, un jus de tomate. Ok? Au restaurant. Ok, so let's start now. Une table, un verre, une assiette, une assiette plate, une assiette creuse. Ok, so let's see them one more time. Une table, un verre, une assiette, une assiette plate, 
Une assiette creuse. Une assiette à dessert. Une serviette. Une fourchette. Un couteau. Une cuillère. Let's repeat them. Une assiette à dessert. Une serviette. Une fourchette. Un couteau. Une cuillère. Une cuillère à soupe. Un garçon. Un menu. Une carte des vins. À la carte. Une cuillère à soupe. Un garçon, remember when we get this cédille beneath the C, it will give you the pronunciation S of C. So instead of K, as it should be with O, ok? So, un garçon, un menu, une carte des vins, à la carte. Une addition, un reçu. Un pourboire, une addition, un reçu, un pourboire. Le poisson, so it will be a vocabulary lesson, ok, so let's start now. Le thon, la dorade, la morue, le saumon, le bar. Let's repeat them. Le ton. Remember, H here is not pronounced. Le ton. La dorade. La morue. Final E uh, not pronounced. Le saumon. O N, remember, nasal in your nose. Saumon. Le bar. Le merlan. La raie. La sardine. L'aigle fin, la limande sol, ok, so, le merlan, la raie, final e, uh, not pronounced, la sardine, you don't insist on the final e, uh, it only gives you the n, n pronunciation, sardine, l'aigle fin, la limande sol, la sol, L'espadon, la truite, le macro, la lotte, la sol, same thing, don't insist on the final E, ok, it only gives you the L sound, sol, l'espadon, O-N in your nose, nasal, on, espadon, la truite, same thing here, final E not pronounced, t, la truite. Le macro. So technically this K, just pronounce it K, mac, macro, macro. All right? And then E, A, U, remember when you combine these three vowels, you get the sound O, macro. Okay? And then la lot, final E, not pronounced, lot, t, t, lot. Okay? La lot. All right? Les céréales. L'avoine, le blé, le maïs, le millet. So let's repeat them. L'avoine, remember, not insist on the final E. L'avoine, le blé, here, accent aigu, et le maïs. So here you get this tréma, so maïs, maïs. And then you pronounce the final S, maïs. Le millet, here, I, and then double L, so I, I, millet. E, T at the end, open, millet. L'orge, le quinoa, le son. Let's repeat. L'orge, le quinoa, le son.